This is Dick Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. In the mighty SEC, on the rise is a label that doesn't come easy. With recent success, Vanderbilt heads into their season having earned those high hopes. As does Ole Miss, Coach Hugh Freeze has momentum having filled the Rebels with top young talent. Now it's time to show it all. Welcome you to ESPN College Football Primetime, served by Applebee's, part of Dick's Sporting Goods Kickoff Week as you're watching the SEC on ESPN. From Vanderbilt Stadium here in Nashville, the SEC Conference Opener. Ole Miss coming off a bowl win in Coach Hugh Freeze's first season, taking out a Vanderbilt team looking to keep rolling off a record setting nine win season. As we say good evening, everybody. Joe Tessitore alongside Matt Millen. Glad to have football Ooh, back. Here. Cheers. We're no longer previewing football. Uh, yes. We're broadcasting football. And it's a critical one right here, opening night of the season, a conference game in the SEC. Both programs feel great about themselves, but this is a big one. Does it get any better than this? Two SEC programs that are taking the next step. Two young coaches who have their programs going the right way. And here's the best part. Two rosters with outstanding young talent that I can't wait to watch tonight. Spent a good part of the day today talking about Jadavion Clowney, watching Jadavion Clowney tonight. The next one could Ooh. be in front of us. Robert Kamdichie, number one recruit in the nation a year ago, suiting up for Ole Miss at defensive end. Number five, watching tonight, what a skill set this kid has. I'm really anxious to watch this kid to see exactly what he is. Everybody's talked about him. You can see the movement. You can see the size. He's a big kid, 300 pounds, high-energy guy. Everybody knows who he is on the field and know exactly where he lines up. Yes, yeah, it's the target of everybody in the SEC on the recruiting trail. Coming out of Grayson High School back there in Georgia, 41 sacks in his high school career. Older brother Denzel, big reason why he's in an Ole Miss uniform. He's a freshman in All-America. Robert already having a strong fall camp. They're saying they're double teaming him, and he's a freshman out there yeah, you going against it. the big boys in August. As for Vandy, new quarterback Austin Carter Samuels, same old big target in Jordan Matthews, could be the SEC's all-time leading receiver when all is said and done at the end of this year. One of the top players in the SEC. He did it with fanfare a year ago. He's going to have to do the same thing again this year. Jordan Matthews is a big body guy who has bloodlines to Jerry Rice, has the same type of work ethic, and he's working with a new quarterback. Austin Carter Sam, you'll see him here, number six. This is going to be his, his first time at the helm. He had a start a year ago. They're expecting big things from him, has a big arm, needs to settle himself down and get into a groove. It is the SEC opener. Which program will keep hitting in the right direction? Ole Miss and Vanderbilt. The kickoff is next from Nashville. Stay with us. Ole Miss is poised to have their best recruiting class ever. As the saying goes, hotty toddy. It's a heck of a day down there in Oxford. It just really was kind of the perfect storm for us. I have decided to attend the University of Ole Miss. And the reaction to the number one overall recruit, Robert Kimdichie. He's just part of an exceptional freshman group Ole Miss landed on signing day. How about that sea of red here? It's like the Grove has come to Nashville. Joining us on our broadcast team this year is Maria Taylor with more on that freshman group for the Rebels. Maria. Hey, Joe. Well, guys, no matter if you're watching offense or defense for Ole Miss, there are plenty of highly touted freshmen to keep an eye on. Starting with the number one receiver prospect in the 2013 recruiting class, Laquan Treadwell. He will be starting in the slot today and is expected to make an instant impact. Also at left tackle, Laramie Tunsil, second on the depth chart, but will still receive plenty of snaps. On the other side of the ball, Tony Connor is expected to play a critical role on defense at that nickel position. And of course, there's the young man who did all the comparisons to Davion Clowney, Robert Kimdichie. Now I talked to defensive line coach Chris Kiffin, and he basically says he sees the similarities. They're both athletic, they can make mistakes and still make the play, but they've really been working with them in camp and staying disciplined and not sacrificing his gap control just for the one-on-one -on -one battle, guys. That'll be something to watch out for today. And Maria, we're going to be watching out for those freshmen all night long, that class that Hugh Freeze put together two years into the job now at Ole Miss. They had lost 14 straight SEC games when he took over. Vanderbilt's James Franklin, one of the most deeply passionate, sincerely enthusiastic coaches 
in all of football. First coach in Vandy history to lead the Commodores to back to back bowl games. Ole Miss won the toss deferred. Vanderbilt will receive. Well, Tess will have a chance to watch Kim Dietschy start his season off from the first snap of defense. Gaster and Howe back to return the Andrew Ritter kick. And the SEC 2013 is underway. And Hall is taken down right near the 10 yard line. As Cody Gore came in on special teams to tackle Andre Howe. So Austin Carter Samuels first year as the man as the starting quarterback transferred in from Wyoming had a couple years of success there and the coaches describe him as fiery emotional hyped early so they'll look to settle him down. They go two tight ends with Wesley Tate as the lone back here. And Tate able to get it out just past the 15 yard line tackled by Mike Hilton. Pace will be a big deal tonight from both of these offenses and what they really want to do and you mentioned with Carter Samuels is settle him down. He's a very excitable guy. He's a guy who can get a little hyped a little bit too fast. So they're going to I would expect to see a lot of easy throws run the football if they can. They need to establish this running game. Interestingly Joe. The very first run is right at Kendichi. See referee Matt Moore coming over and talking to Hugh Freeze as it was the Vanderbilt sideline and James Franklin who let the officials know that he was having some issues with his communication. As you see him staring across, looks like Freeze the one who's dealing with taking the headset off. As they take a little time to straighten things out, we'll peek in on the way you see things, Matt, with Millen's matchup tonight. Well, there's a couple of good ones going on, but on this side of the ball, Tony Connor, just a young freshman against Jordan Matthews. They're going to have to deal with Matthews. The whole SEC is going to have to deal with him as he's the top receiver, one of the top receivers coming back. Tony Connor, just a freshman, but has outstanding skills, and they have great confidence in him. I'm going to be I'm going to be interested in watching that one all night long. I mentioned earlier that Matthews related to Jerry Rice. His mother is first cousin to the Hall of Fame receiver. He's a, such a big part of what Vanderbilt does. He's such a big part of what James Franklin wants here. Because what he is is he's the hardest worker on this team. Jerry Rice I played with and J.R. was one of those guys who was a nonstop worker. And Jordan Matthews has the exact same trait. He works constantly, all practice long, all game long. Second and five. As Tate stays in and has the lone back. The younger brother of Golden Tate. Carter Samuels, first pass of the year. He swings it to Tate. And he scoots ahead for just about a yard and a half. It'll be third and about three and a half. Mike Mary coming over with the tackle of Wesley Tate. They're going to go with the hurry up. Try to keep the same personnel on the field so you think offensively you have the matchup you're looking for. Pistol formation with Carter Samuels. So we miss we're going to see plenty of hurry up from tonight. I don't know what that's about. Once again, they're coming over and discussing the headsets with both head coaches. Hugh Freeze has his on, so they'll reset there for third and three. As Franklin racing over to get a headset on. Play action. Quick strike, and it's complete to Matthews for a first down out to the 29-yard line. 
one yard reception by Matthews. Yeah, we talked about Jordan Matthews. Now here's the thing. Everybody on that Ole Miss defense knows where the ball is going. And Matthews still uses that big body, gains some leverage. And I'll tell you, Carter Samuels, that was a dart. He threw that thing right on the line. Emmer looking to get him some confidence early on here. Here's a shift of the offensive line, and the left guard becomes the center. How about that? And Tate taken down for a loss that time by Mike Hilton. So it didn't fool the Ole Miss defense as the entire offensive line shifted to the right man. And the reason they can do that test is because four of the five offensive linemen on Vanderbilt's offensive line can snap the ball. They went two over. They shifted two men over, and it was their tackle who ended up, that's Wesley Johnson, 67, snapping the ball. So something out of offensive coordinator John Donovan, but it backs them up to a second and 13. Going to work out of the shotgun here is Carter Samuels. Now sprinting to extend the play. And then he throws it out of bounds. The pressure came from Mike Mary, number 38. Of course, that number 38 jersey at Ole Miss, something special. The recipient of the Chucky Mullins Courage Award. You know, Tess, one of the matchups that I was hoping to see, and we're getting it, is Robert Kendici, just a freshman, 18 years old, against Wesley Johnson. Now, Wesley Johnson's one of the SEC's best offensive linemen. He's moving from right tackle to left tackle. A very athletic guy, very smart guy, has not had a holding call in his career. The guy, not that he doesn't hold, just hasn't been caught. Empty backfield here on third and 13. They only bring three. Throws it underneath to Chris Cantera. And that'll be well short. And they're claiming that's a turnover, and indeed it is. And that was Tony Connor coming up with the ball. Connor, the huge recruit who Alabama was after, is one of those guys who's just physically ready. And watch him come in here and just rip this away from Chris Cantera. That is an outstanding play by Connor. We talked about him earlier. Now, right there, it's anybody's ball. But it's whoever fights for it the most who comes up with it. So That's prime field position for Bo Wallace, the quarterback of these Ole Miss Rebels. Play action to get the night going for Bo Wallace. And he quickly swings it out that time to Jordan Holder. Holder with a gain of three there in the reception. Bo Wallace had shoulder surgery. It was on his throwing shoulder back in January. Never threw the ball in spring, came back in fall camp, had limited reps the first couple weeks, and then rounded out with a good finish to fall camp the past few weeks. Wallace gets it complete for a first down to the true freshman, Laquan Treadwell. Hey, all you college football fans out there, you keep your eyes on this kid number one, Laquan Treadwell. This is a big body superstar in the making. This kid has every ingredient you need to be great. See the up tempo by Ole Miss. Now he got it down to the 16 yard line after the interception by freshman Tony Connor. Just ripping the ball away. Wallace reads it, keeps it, and barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Yes, remember yesterday when we were talking to Bo Wallace, one of the first things he wanted to talk about, first things out of his mouth was, well, I haven't been hit yet. And he was kind of looking forward to this first hit. Well, there it is. That should settle him down a little bit. Very hearing. Sophomore linebacker wrapping up Wallace. Second and ten. Jeff Scott in the backfield, just 5'7", 160 pounds, but boy, can he move. Play action. Wallace to the end zone. That was thrown to the inside of Jordan Holder. As it was Andre Howe who had coverage on the senior receiver. Andre Howe is another one of the SEC's best. This is a corner who knows how to play the game. He's not afraid to be physical. He'll walk up and get his hands on you. He's their best defensive back. I'm going to tell you, this Ole Miss offense is, is giving them some problems with this thing spread out. 
because Treadwell in the slot is a major problem. Six foot three, 215 pound frame. There he is, right number there. one, Laquan Treadwell. Number one wide receiver recruit in the country signed last February. Third and ten. Wallace. Logan trying to turn the corner, and he can't. Jamez Logan forced out by Howe. That's an excellent play by Howe. Howe working off the block and still making the play. He's in coverage. You have to keep your coverage. Now you have to transition and become a real defender in terms of making a tackle. He did a great job there. Andrew Ritter has never attempted a field goal in his college career. Former kickoff specialist who redshirted last year. This from 31. And he puts it through. So the interception by Connor turns into quick three for Ole Miss. Joe Tessitore, Matt Millen, Maria Taylor with you here in Nashville. Ole Miss lost nine straight SEC openers, but off to a good start here against Vanderbilt. Thanks to that guy, Matt, the true freshman, Tony Connor with the interception to set up the field goal. You know, we talked about him a lot, just getting ready for this game, just because you knew there were a lot of teams were on him. Everybody wanted this guy. There were some SEC teams that wanted to make him the centerpiece of their recruiting class, and Hugh Freeze got him at Ole Miss, and it's easy to see why. Great instincts on top of all the physical skills. All the talk about Kim Dietschy. Here's the other defensive first-year star making an instant impact. Drew Ritter to kick off after connecting on first field goal in his college career. And with that enthusiasm, he blasts it all the way back through the end zone. Weekend menu is brought to you by Applebee's as we start off what is, what some say, the best stretch of opening games that college football has seen in recent years. You got the defending national champs going up against Virginia Tech. Huge showdown between Georgia and Clemson. LSU TCU is Gary Patterson and Les Miles engaged in all that gamesmanship. And then we're going to take a look at the Heisman candidate, Teddy Bridgewater, comes Sunday at 3.30 at Louisville. Ryan Kimbrough now in as the tailback in the eye formation. Kimbrough gets the call here, testing the left side that time, but he was taken down by Woodrow Hamilton, the 300-pound nose tackle. Kim Dietschy just switched from the right defensive end to the left defensive end. So he had a little handful over there of Wes Johnson. Now they put him on the other side. He's naturally a left end. That means a 300 pounder. He's got great, great skills and movement. He should dominate as a bigger man. Remember, most teams are right handed when running the ball, and you want a bigger, more physical guy at your left defensive end. Compared to the pure, the pure edge speed rusher right. on the other side. Second and nine. Carter Samuels going to swing it out to Kimbrough, and he can't hold on to it as that's incomplete. Was a forward pass as Robert Kamdichi getting in his face there for a moment. You know, it's fun watching a young guy, okay? And so here he goes. This is just pure power. What he's going to learn is not to attack the full man. He came right down the middle of the man because he's a big, powerful guy. He's able to get pressure in his face. But when he learns to attack, uh, to attack half a man, he'll be that much better. Vendici. Ready, aimed, and ready to fire here on third and nine. Here he comes off the edge as Curtis Samuels escapes to the right side on third and nine. And that was knocked down. Guess who? As it was Tony Connor again. Coming up big. I wonder if he's related to the mother of the Terminator. <laughs> he's playing like it. First series, he gets an interception. And then a pass defended on his second defensive series of his career. And as Carter Samuels has now missed on his last four. Taylor Hudson on to punt away to Jeff Scott who didn't return punts last year after having so much success as a return man in 2011. Shank. I think he kicked that into the stands Tess. 
So a poor effort from the walk-on punter Taylor Hudson. They're still marking it off, and it's all the way to the 42-yard line. A 16-yard punt. Listen, the kid's studying to be a neurosurgeon, so don't worry about his future too much as a pro punter. They're getting on his nerves. <laughs> Applebee's two for twenty dollars menu just got even better with the new honey pepper grill and in part by Dick's Sporting Goods every season starts at Dick's beautiful hot steamy night here in the music city of Nashville down there at Broadway we're just a couple miles west here at Vanderbilt Stadium glad you're with us on the opening night of the college football season Joe Matt Maria here we're on this has a field goal lead early against Vanderbilt and good field position again. Interception had their opening drive start at the 31 and now after the 16 yard punt by Taylor Hudson they're going to tee up here at the 42. Jeff Scott in the backfield with Bo Wallace working on the pistol and now he flanks him to the right. Wallace on the read. And Wallace Able to get it to the 36 yard line, tackled by Vince Taylor. With this thing all spread out with these receivers, you want your running game to be able to, to take care of the seven people in the box and get everybody else outside. You can keep them out there, you can start to throw the ball with a lot of success. So Dante Moncrief and Laquan Treadwell, dangerous receivers, as they will keep it on the ground with Jeff Scott, going to be about a yard and a half short. As Kyle Westman made the tackle. Millen's matchup when it comes to that Ole Miss offense. Yeah, we talked about their receivers. We have a nice one. Dante Moncrief is an outstanding receiver. Andre Howe, one of the best in the SEC. And they're matching them up all night here. On at 32 here. As Jeff Scott stays in and Treadwell, the freshman, shifts over. Treadwell is the guy right in the slot, number one. He's the guy who's going to give this defense problems here tonight. Well, he's checking at the line. Yep. Play action. Gets it complete to Moncrief for a first down as he uses his block to get down to the 26-yard line before he's tackled by Herring and Lattler. A nine-yard pickup by Moncrief. And did you see who got out there? Laramie Tunsil. The other freshmen, there's freshmen all over the field here tonight, and every one of them is, is playing really well. Oh, that was almost picked off that time. That was Carl Butler stepping into the lane there on that Wallace pass. He tried to throw that thing quick, but Butler, 28, he has he's on it on a beeline right away. He sees it quick, makes an outstanding break. Second and ten. So they will hurry up to that line of scrimmage time and time again. Pace the name of the game for Dan Warner, the offensive coordinator, and Coach Freeze. They have a matchup on the outside with Moncrief on the top side. He said if they got the one-on-one -on -one out there, they would try to take it. He's out on an island. Wallace goes to the other side and is able to get it complete to Jamez Logan. Logan on Howe down below. And that's a first down for Ole Miss, a 12-yard reception. A little pitch and catch with Bo Wallace right now. Wallace going to take it himself and slide down at the 10-yard line as Carl Butler was coming in. He talked about Wallace and that shoulder not taking a hit up until tonight. He hasn't been bashful about keeping it himself. Not at all. Jeff Scott now. Scott to the edge and lowers the shoulder. And they're going to say he's just short of the goal line as Kenny Ladler kept him out. But it'll set up to be a first and goal for Ole Miss. Nine yard run by Scott. Ladler did a really nice job of coming through, but that's this Ole Miss team not running inside. They're taking the stuff to the outside. 
Bo Wallace, can he spin his way in? They're going to mark him short. He had eight rushing touchdowns a year ago. So it'll be second and goal. You freeze in that staff. You had a lot of time to think about giving up that big lead last year and losing at home to Vanderbilt. Determined focus coming here on the road to open the season and get off to a good start against the doors. Now they took Bo Wallace out and put Brunetti in, and they went with the heavy package inside. Two receivers out, two tight ends in. Barry Brunetti out of the shotgun. Brunetti now. And Brunetti able to get in. Barry Brunetti, who started his career at West Virginia as a dual threat quarterback, transferred out of there when he realized Geno Smith was the man, comes to Ole Miss and gets their first touchdown of the season. set up with that good field position after Hudson's near 16 yard punt. Andrew Ritter puts it through. Bo Wallace let him down. And then Barry Brunetti marched it the final yard. Ole Miss up 10 zip. Only two races left until the chase for the cup. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Atlanta, presented by Pennzoil. Coverage starts Sunday at 7 on ESPN. Big sports weekend down in Atlanta. Got Alabama and Virginia Tech coming up Saturday from the Georgia Dome. Glad you're with us here in Nashville. All the hype surrounding Ole Miss and that recruiting class that Hugh Freeze brought in there's a big part of it Tony Connor the freshman nickel husky position I'll tell you what that translates to as Tony Connor he'll be near the ball <laughs> pretty simple <laughs> Ritter's kick once again sails long as advertised when it comes to the freshman defenders Matt well we talked about this recruiting class and you heard Maria Taylor talking about Tony Connor. And Connor made his presence early with the interception. And then Ken Dietschy moving from the right to the left side in two consecutive plays had good rushes. One forced a bad throw, and that one got a little pressure for another one. So they're making their presence felt. Story of the game field position. Ole Miss starting at the 31 and 42 of Vanderbilt, cashing in on that last drive. Nine plays, 42 yards with Barry Brunetti. Ron Seymour now in the backfield for Vanderbilt. He's five foot seven is Seymour. He's like a little bowling ball when he gets going forward with a gain of three there. Guess tackled exactly. by Tony Connor. I can't say enough about this Tony Connor. You know, there's one thing about saying, you know, here's a high recruit and they have high expectations for him. And there's another one to say, look, you're putting him in in the very first game after only two weeks of practice, understanding your scheme, and then letting your, your instincts take over. And that's what this kid has. You, you can see it right away. He finds the ball. He always puts himself in good position. This kid's a joy to watch. I mean, it's just the first game, but just early returns are outstanding. Wildcat here, direct snap. Wasn't a good snap to Seymour, but he does find a bit of a seam here, and he'll set up a third and three. Maria? Guys, before Austin Carter Samuels took the field again, I saw James Franklin telling him to settle down to see the play before it happens, and you could see him just trying to calm his quarterback down now in this offense. Yeah, that's been one of the big talkabouts the past couple days here at Vanderbilt. It's getting him into a comfortable rhythm in this kind of prime time spot in an SEC conference opener. Facing a third and three now. going to have a timeout for James Franklin. We'll talk things over with Carter Samuels and we'll take a short break. Third and three when we return. My wife. 
Is she alive? For now. Do you want her back? Follow my instructions precisely. Drive. Rule number one. There is a package at the bank. Steal it and get it out of the city. Rule number two. The police will be after you. Don't get caught. Rule number three. You have two hours. I'm coming after you. You hear me? The clock is ticking. Get away. With a PG-13 starts Friday. Chicken for a buck buck. Huh. Wendy's Monterey Ranch. Also a buck buck. Winner. Oh. It's back. Wendy's Monterey Ranch Crispy Chicken. Crispy and delicious. Now just 99 cents. Now that's better. He's a young champion. He earned his right to be up here with me as the best versus the best. The one. Right hand by Alvarez. Floyd Mayweather putting on a show. Corona Extra presents Mayweather versus Canelo. The one. Throw the biggest party of the year with Corona Extra. And there is Canelo with a straight right. Floyd Mayweather. Off the fingers of Chris Cantera. Vanderbilt with only one first down tonight as they will be punting away. Well, the coaching staff knew they needed to get him settled down so he could find a rhythm. Yesterday I had the opportunity to speak with Jordan Rogers about him, who's he's he's Carter Samuel's biggest fan. He says he has an outstanding arm. He just got to get himself calmed down early and said he'll be fine. So far, he hasn't found that calm. Number Taylor Hudson, first punt, only went for 16 yards. Much better effort here as Jeff Scott fields it all the way back at the 15. Took a couple bunny hops before he decided to go forward, getting out to the 26 yard line, tackled by Carl Butler. A little better that time. 52 yard punt with an 11 yard return as Taylor Hudson gains a little bit of confidence back. Saturday night, Matt, on ABC. Here we go. Let's decide something early. Best regular season in all sports. Number five, Georgia. Number eight, Clemson. Saturday night football presented by Windows, part of Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week. Well, the plethora of talent on both these rosters. You love both the quarterbacks, but it's going to be more than that, Tess. It's going to be those big offensive lines that are physical. Clemson, Clemson's got real players, real speed, and a real chance in that game. That's going to be... That's going to be one of the best of the weekend. And best non-conference games of the entire year. Alan Walton now in the backfield with Wallace, and he gets the call and he drives ahead for just a game about a yard and a half. Let's check in the studio with Chris Cotter. Chris. All right, Tess, I've got some cores like cold hard facts for you. Lightning is dangerous, and so is South Carolina's Mike Davis. Check him out on the 75-yard touchdown run against North Carolina earlier tonight on ESPN. Breaks into the clear and uses that speed to score. South Carolina took a 27-10 lead. They're in a, rain, a weather delay right now. As soon as that delay ends, they'll finish up on ESPN News, Test. Thank you very much, Chris. So the lightning delay continues in Columbia. Wallace on second and eight. Pressure up the middle, and they get to him that time. And that was Baron Dixon and Darian Herring coming in on Bo Wallace. And that is one of the things that Bob Shoup prides himself on. Darian Herring is one of those guys who has to make plays, and he's going to put him, Shoup's going to put him in position. Shoup loves to blitz. Third and 16. And he overthrew Moncrief, who was looking for a flag that time, but he was well covered by Andre Howe. Hugh Freeze was looking for the same flag, and so was Bo Wallace. Heck, Bo Wallace ran 20 yards down to try to find the official. So Herring comes up big with the sack, and it forces them in to a long third down as Vanderbilt will try to take advantage with good field position here. As you see Moncrief complaining at the end of that play. Tyler Campbell will trot on to punt for Ole Miss. Led the NCAA in punting as a sophomore back in 2010. Jonathan Krause from the 27. And he can't get past 
the initial tackler that time as Cody Pruitt did a fine job on special teams. Rebels up 10 early on here. Here's to being one of one, a true one of a kind. Same make, same model, same year. Carter Samuels going to set up the screen for Wesley Tate. And Tate lowers the shoulder against Chief Brown as he's able to get it to the 34-yard line. Let's see if Vanderbilt struggles. 29 total yards of offense. Interception by Tony Connor set the tone early for Ole Miss and the poor punt that gave them great field position as they march down on a nine-play touchdown drive. Eight again, this time second and five, and he is brought down by that front four that included Robert Kimdichi. Who lined up on the left side instead of the right side. They're moving him around, but what that speaks to is his versatility and his ability. Now, your feet and your hands are different offensively as an offensive tackle and as a defensive end. And so when you have a young guy like this, that just speaks to how versatile he is. Now he switches from one side to the other. So a loss of one makes for a third and six. To get the ball into Jordan Matthews' hands. Tate's in the slot. Matthews the slot on the near side. On third and six. Samuels sprinting to the right and getting it complete that time for a first down to Jonathan Kraus, the senior receiver. Well done by Kraus to come back to the ball. And nice by Carter Samuels, a nice throw on the run. But watch his feet. He makes sure he gets that one in bounds and does a nice job, like I said, of coming back towards the football. Eight-yard reception by Kraus. It's a real chance for him to step up now with an opportunity that's been put his way. Last year, a lot of success as a punt return. Tate looking for an opening and finding very little that time as coming down the line was DT Shackelford. Talked Shackleford. about Krause as a punt returner. This is a guy that really toughened up. You talk about gaining confidence. Look what happened to him in SEC play against Arkansas back in 2011. I mean, that's everything under the sun in the rule book. Targeting, getting there early. As Kraus was laid out by Arkansas's Markel Wade. Wesley Tate now on second and nine, trying to spin free. But Chief Brown was there to secure him. As that clock is counting down here in the first quarter. That Ole Miss took advantage of good hard play by their young defensive players. Solid field position. And then steadily moving the ball with Bo Wallace and backup quarterback Barry Brunetti with the touchdown run. Rebels up 10 0 at the end of one. These two for 20 menu now. It's the We welcome you back to ESPN College Football Primetime. Served by Applebee's, part of Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week. The SEC on ESPN. A hot, steamy night here in Nashville. Joe Tessitore, Matt Millen, Maria Taylor with you. Hugh Freeze telling us all week, hey, Vanderbilt's mature and experienced. We're young and inexperienced. You know what? They're also young and very talented with that defense. Let's see what they offer up against the Commodores here on third and seven. 
Carter Samuels with time over the middle complete. How about Jordan Matthews? The best player coming up big. A gainer all the way down to the 28. A 28 yard reception. And also nicely played by Carter Samuels. He stood right in the pocket. Very well done. This is against a zone. You got to find the hole. And he does it extremely well sitting down inside. But this kid has some massive hands. Tess, you go to shake hands with him. He engulfs yours. Lone back is Wesley Tate. And on the pitch, he just gets back to the line of scrimmage, tackled by Thompson and Burdett. You know, Wesley Tate is one of those guys, brother of Golden Tate, who's big, fast, physical, but needs to be a better player. He's got all the ingredients, just hasn't put it together yet. Quick screen now this time to Matthew. Stiff arms his way. And let's see if they give him the yardage there. Yes, they're going to mark it down at the 17, so that'll move the chains. This offensive line right now is doing a nice job. The ball's coming out quick, and the guy they need to get the ball in his hands to, and they have to be creative with him, is Matthews. When he has the ball in his hands, good things happen for this offense. It's all Ole Miss talked about all week long is that everything with this Vandy offense begins and ends with that guy, Jordan Matthews. See the exchange, the tight end, and Matthews inside that puts him on a defender who he can beat. Samuels looking his way. Carter Sanders now over the middle, settles back to his second choice, Kraus. And Kraus brings it to the 10 yard line. It'll be second and three there, tackled by Collins. This is nicely done by offensive uh, coordinator for Vanderbilt, John Donovan. So, what he's doing right there is he's moving his personnel around and he's forcing you defensively. If you're going to stay in the zone, you get a mismatch. That's what he had right there. Curtis Samuels, five for five on this drive. Good confidence builder to just settle down here. They race up to the line of scrimmage here. Tate now, Lassen with a block, and Tate will have a first down. It'll be first and goal for Vanderbilt. As there was good power surge that time by that Vanderbilt front. Yeah, they, they like to run behind that left offensive tackle, number 67, Wesley Johnson. We talked a little bit about him earlier, but this is a complete player. 295-pound guy who who will get bigger, but athletic, outstanding in the run game and pass protection. This is Tate now on the direct snap, patiently waiting for his blocks and backing in to the two-yard line as Chief Brown came up for the tackle. Franklin looking over that call sheet as Dave Walmack and that defensive staff trying to come up with a stop here. They go direct snap Tate again here. Lashing out in front. The fullback put in a block and Tate brought it right in. Did he lose the ball there? They say touchdown on the far side as there is a pile up for the ball. But the official on the far side had his hands in the air. We have to see if that ball was, if he crossed the line while he had control of the ball, it's six. That's a touchdown. That's six. It was Anthony Standifer who came in. So a much needed, long sustained drive by the Commodores to get their first score of the season. Jordan Matthews, the all SEC receiver, really helped out James Franklin in the offense there as Curtis Samuels found a groove. Barry Spear, the preseason all SEC first team place kicker, on for the extra point. 12 play drive. Tate had the three yard touchdown.
Curtis Samuels was five for five for 59 yards. And then Wesley Tate cashing in. Earlier this summer, four Vanderbilt players were dismissed from the program as they faced charges of aggravated rape. Four players recently pled not guilty. Another player, starting wide receiver Chris Boyd, he was charged as an accessory after the fact. He pled not guilty. Boyd is currently suspended from the team. And we caught up with James Franklin yesterday. We discussed the situation. He said, it breaks my heart professionally and personally. Wesley Tate with the touchdown run moments ago at eight last year and he makes it a 10-7 game here in the second quarter as Kerry Spear to kick off for the Commodores Walton and Moore back deep to return for Ole Miss see that big leg of the All-SEC kicker. Let's check in with Chris Cotter. Tess, it's time for the Dr. Pepper 10 Conference update. And UConn, a member of the New American Athletic Conference, in their opener on the year, and it is not going well. This is Towson quarterback Peter Athens to Sterling Pfeiffer. This would make the score 7-7, but it's now Towson 26 and UConn 10 at home. Wow, tough way to get the year going for Paul Pasqualoni and the Huskies in a game like that. They are now in the newly named conference. The former Big East is the American. We will see Louisville finish up play in that conference before they head off to the ACC. Teddy Bridgewater in the top 10 cards in action Sunday on ESPN at 3.30 in the afternoon. Bo Wallace and that up-tempo Ole Miss offense back to business after that long 71-yard 12-play drive by Vanderbilt and they go with the end around this time as there was no gain there by Moore Halo Moore another one of those true freshman speedsters Fresno and Rutgers coming up on ESPNU later that's a good offense that Fresno State has with little brother Carr Derek Carr brother of David and 10 Wallace that ball was bouncing that time but it goes harmlessly incomplete as Caleb Azubike backed off into coverage Azubike dropped off on a on a on a zone blitz and Bo Wallace hit him right in the knee Azubike. exactly what the zone blitz is intended to do right <laughs> exactly right send the other guys you drop off and quarterback has issues third and 10 now Wallace Pressure comes and they get to him. Azubake was right there in the middle of it. Westman and Azubake finding Bo Wallace. And that spurs on this Commodore's crowd. You know, that Azubake kid, he's got something to him. He's about 30 pounds bigger than he was a year ago, and he's he's still raw. He's learning how to play this game. But man, they got after it pretty good. Westman right there, the first guy, Azubake finishes it. Second straight, three and out, put forth by that Vanderbilt defense. So Campbell ooh, will punt away. And fortunately for him, it takes a decent bounce because it didn't have much on it, but it crosses midfield. 35-yard punt for Tyler Campbell. Defense stepping up for the doors here in Nashville. Every month. ESPN College Football Primetime. Brought to you by the Experience Buick Lease. It's a new lease on luxury. And Frostbrew Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. No way! No, no and you way. enjoy a little street magic? <laughs> I, I never, you know, you always watch those guys and you see them do stuff, and I always come away from it going, I know it's fake, but I can never see it. <laughs> I'll tell you, Caleb Azubake, 
great defender. He's got a little oh. magic going on with those contact lenses or eyes or something. I mean, what's going on here, That's Miller? Doc Bruce Banner jumped into gamma rays, <laughs> turns into the Hulk. That's the same look I've seen it before. Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno would be jealous there of Azubake. <laughs> Came up big defensively with the sack moments ago, and now Vandy back to offense and back to Jordan Matthews. Watch out! Touchdown doors! Big time, Jordan Matthews, 55-yard touchdown, and Vanderbilt takes the lead. We said he was going to be the big block, the, the big playmaker, but he wasn't the key on this one, Tess. This is completely on Jonathan Krause, an outstanding block on the outside to set the stage, and because of Krause, Matthews is the stud. Jordan Matthews, one of these guys who's gone through his career just being as productive as can be, but not getting all the attention and glory. Introduces himself as two-star, as in he was only a two-star recruit that didn't have any other scholarship offers. You see him right there hugging Kraus? He should. Jonathan Kraus was the key to this whole play. Right from the start, you're going to watch him this slot. Kraus knows he's not getting the ball. He also knows he has to take care of that outside defender. Now, I want you to watch this. This is as good as it gets. Aim for the outside knee, takes it out, and clears that right sideline. And then if you had any question about Jordan Matthews' speed, it's erased. He's one of those guys that's as fast as he needs to be. Matthews now four catches, 105 yards, and that touchdown. And he is on pace to become the SEC's all-time career yardage and reception leader this year. Came into the season needing just 804 yards to pass Terrence Edwards, former Georgia star. That's a nice job there. They're acknowledging Krause because that's a fantastic job. You know, Matthews, Matthews is one of those players, Tess, just watching him in practice, watching how he interacts with his teammates. He's one of those players that makes you a better team. He's a fantastic teammate. He's a leader in the locker room. He's a hard worker, the hardest guy out there to work. He brings it every single day. He's one of those guys that when he gets on your team, he makes you overall better. 14 to 10, Vanderbilt scoring two touchdowns in a minute 29. Jalen Wolf, fourth in the SEC last year in kick return average, looking to set up Bo Wallace in that. Ole Miss offense to try to respond here against the doors. And here's Walton from the end zone. And he doesn't even get out to the 15. Vanderbilt's all fired up. And it's Kale Luke on special teams. Saturday night, Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week continues. First at 5.30 Eastern. Number one, Alabama going up against Virginia Tech. Then at nine, Les Miles and Gary Patterson. They've been having a little verbal war for the past oh, month, yeah. a little gamesmanship. Well, LSU and TCU are going to settle in the Cowboys Classic. That's college football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. I was laughing, Gary, saying this week, I'm going to start both quarterbacks. <laughs> Doesn't want to give anything to Les. And quickly this time, Evan Ingram is the target for Bo Wallace, the freshman tight end. Gordon Matthews has just lit the fuse here at Vanderbilt Stadium. And now Jeff Scott taken down after a gain of just about two that time. So it'll be third and six. This Vanderbilt defense they have settled down against the up-tempo attack of Ole Miss. They need the Hulk in there. He's powering up. <laughs> and Zubike looking on as Kenny Ladler and the rest of the gang look to get after it here. 34 as Bo Wallace checks at the line of scrimmage.
Wallace quickly out to Scott, who dives ahead. And Scott will have the first down for the Rebels. Nicely done by Jeff Scott. Of great awareness of knowing where that marker is and making sure the ball crosses the yard marker to get that first. Here's Scott again, slithering his way just past the 30-yard line before Ladler got a piece of him. You know, this, this Vanderbilt defense, they like to do a lot of movement up front with their defensive line because they're not that big. And so when you have a lot of movement, there's a, a, a mesh, a certain mesh that has to happen. Sometimes it's feast or famine. You get them, they might get you. But with all of that, your safeties have to be your best tacklers. Second and four, play action. Wallace right over the middle and wide open that time was Evan Ingram. Nice play action, but we have an oldest rebel getting up slow back there. That's uh, Austin Golson. Oh, no, I'm sorry, that's 73. That's Aaron Morris, the left guard. 360 pound left guard. He's had 19 starts. Got some experience there, the junior guard for Ole Miss. So a first down into Vanderbilt territory. Pulls it out of Scott's gut. Goes over the middle again and going up for it again that time is Engram. So Engram, the freshman tight end, getting a chance to play. Big recruit. They graduated three tight ends off last year's team, so he's playing a role early, man. You know, if you're... If you, I've always said this in college football and in pro football. If you attack the inside linebackers in the middle of the field with your tight ends, it'll open everything else up for you. Wallace this time. Unable to shake free of Carl Butler. Well, Butler is an undersized linebacker and a big DB. And they put him, they, you know, they'll they'll put him in different spots. He can have he has coverage skills, but they like to blitz him a lot when he's in coming off the edge. Looking for Treadwell, went off a defender that time. As Stephen Clark had coverage of the number one receiver recruit in the country, Laquan Treadwell. That was a nice job by Stephen Clark, because Treadwell's legit. I gotta tell you right there, Bo Wallace needs to get a little more luft under that thing. He needs a little more air on that ball. Well, Treadwell will go up and get it if he does that. Treadwell can do that. You put the ball up, he will go attack it. He's got, the, he's got some Michael Irvin in him. 6'3", 215, his college debut here. Third and nine now for Wallace and the Reds. Here comes the pressure, and he goes down that time. And that was Stephen Weatherly, charging hard by Bo Wallace. That's number 45, Weatherly. And what you're going to see is yet another blitz. Right here, I believe he is. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead and run it. I'm not seeing the numbers real well. There he comes on the top side. Oh, they just ran a, a simple stunt. It was a twist. The guard should have stayed and switched, and he never did. Weatherly comes down inside and gets himself a sack. Third sack tonight by Vanderbilt. Stepping up at the right time was Weatherly. And they just punt away, and it goes into the end zone. Ole Miss had their moments on that drive. Ingram had three catches. They got into positive territory. And then the door was shut on Wallace. Appleby turns out to be the man. Lately, those voters have liked the new kid to come into the game. Jordan Matthews has been a star, the man with that star on the side of the helmet for Vanderbilt tonight. Had the 55-yard touchdown. 14-10 lead for the Commodores. Austin Carter Samuel is going to take a shot, and he connects with Jonathan Krause. Krause got away with a push. But as long as the official don't see it, there's no flag. He gets away with it. 33-yard reception by Krause to Hendrick Collins had coverage. Watch the top of the screen and watch as this thing goes on right there. You see that arm extended? He got a push. He got a push and he got the separation, but he also has a big play. Remember, he's the guy that had the key block on Matthews sprint to the end zone. Ryan Kimbrough now 
And Kimbrough reading his blocks well as he is spun down to the 40-yard line by Collins. Here's Chris Cotter in the studio. Test the finisher that North Carolina South Carolina game was delayed close to an hour and 45 minutes due to inclement weather. As you can see, they are back playing. A little over eight minutes left to go in the contest. South Carolina leading 27 to 10. That game can be seen over on ESPN News. Back to Tess and Matt. Thank you, Chris. So, number six South Carolina up 17 as they have resumed play. We've had a good pace, good energy here, and excitement in Nashville to get the SEC conference play underway. Kimbrough again. And a sprint to the right side as the talented sophomore Kimbrough flat comes down at the end. But this is a guy they're very high on, Matt. What did I tell you about him yesterday? Explosive. This is a natural runner. This kid, Kimbrough, he has outstanding runner's patience. He just has a knack to allow your blocker to get in the right position, and then he takes advantage of it. On top of that, he's not a Personal very big guy. Number nine. Defense. Penalty will be half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. First penalty of the game is on DT Shackelford, so they will march this thing even deeper yeah. all the way to the 14. There's the face mask they get him right on. But this Kimbrough kid, I, to me, he was he's the best running back of this stable they have here. Now they go with Wesley Tate Kimbrough, and now we'll see Jerron Seymour, Ooh, who they one. generously listed five foot seven. <laughs> Artis Samuel's going to set up the screen again, but this time Matthews is corralled. That was Tony Connor with the tackle of the All SEC receiver. That's good to see with Connor. You know you can get you once. Now you've seen it. And now you can't let it happen to you again. It was the exact same thing, and they're going to go with the hurry up. Connor was able to sniff it out. They go empty backfield. Five receivers now for Carter Samuels on second and seven. He's going to tuck it, run it, and he loses a yard. Isaac Gross, the sophomore nose tackle, who was all freshman SEC last year, been slowed by injuries, but he's been working back in fall camp. So Kim Dietschy checks in at that right defensive end. Now he's moving over to the left side. Going against that right offensive tackle, which is Andrew Bridges, number 52. Third down here. They need to get to the four-yard line. Things change down here. The angles change as a defender and as a quarterback making these throws. Tight quarters. Pumps once, tucks, runs, dives. Does he have it? Yes. Yes. First and goal, Vanderbilt. And Dietschy came with power. He took Bridges and got him back and collapsed the pocket. Carter Samuels felt the pressure, recognized that there was a plane right in front of him, and took advantage of it. And it was the older brother, the smaller Denzel Kendichi, the outside linebacker, who was able to tackle Austin Carter Samuels. Good decision by Carter Samuels. First and goal to go empty. Now Seymour shifts back, and Austin's under center. Here's the pitch. Into the end zone. Vanderbilt all of a sudden is rolling. Keith Lewis and Anthony Standiford tried to get to Jerron Seymour, but he got right past him. Ron Seymour, that's as good a three-yard run as you're going to find. They knew where they were going. That defense slanted to him, and Seymour saw it, reverse direction, and came back with six. That's, that's really good stuff. One team has come alive. Last year they were down 17 to Ole Miss and rallied back to win. Tonight they put themselves in an early hole and then three touchdowns in their last three possessions. Robert Kimdichie down there at the goal line. Something's missing. It was the running back. He went right in. Glad you're watching the SEC 
on ESPN opening night of the season. We got nothing but action here in Nashville. Joe Tessitore, Matt Miller, Maria Taylor with you as Vanderbilt has exploded with three straight touchdown possessions to take a 21 10 lead. Seven play, 80 yard drive capped by that Jerron Seymour. Three yard touchdown run, but Boy, did he put a lot into those three yards, man. Adapt and overcome. That's what Seymour did. That was just as good as it gets. Barry Spear once again to kick off. Such a talented place kicker. Big leg kickoff guy as well, and he sends this deep yet again. Check in with Chris Cotter in the studio. Chris. Test coming up on the Land Rover halftime report. Looks like South Carolina and North Carolina are finally wrapping up after a long weather delay. We'll show you highlights there. We'll preview Georgia and Clemson. Big one on Saturday night. And targeting ejections. The new rules enforced, new penalties enforced. We've got a couple of examples we'll talk about. Todd McShay, Robert Smith coming up on the Land Rover halftime report. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, it's going to be something that we'll see if it shows up this weekend. The new rule for the punishment for targeting. The rule hasn't changed, been around since 2008, but the punishment has automatic ejection called on the 15-yard targeting penalty now. Here's Moncrief and Dante Moncrief. Welcome to game one of the SEC this season. He's something special, but Morrison Thomas and Hal getting in there. Andre Hal, he was all set for him. Listen to this sucker. That's what football's supposed to sound like. All clean, all 100% legal, and all good stuff. Moncrief, such a big season a year ago, but not much so far tonight. And Wallace goes down again. It was Kyle Westman. Westman's having himself a good first half here. Just great effort coming off the top. Now, he's at that left defensive end. You're going to watch him up here. This is effort. This is what wins for him the whole time. Walker Mays on one end, number 90. Westman on the other side. They got it going right now. Defensive coordinator Bob Shoup, he told us yesterday, listen, he's blue power overachiever, but it wouldn't surprise me if Westman's the kind of year who has a 10-year, kind of guy who has a 10-year pro career. Four sacks tonight for Vanderbilt. Third and 15. I think there was some movement there. Timeout. Ole Miss. That is their first timeout. And Ole Miss was able to get a timeout in. 209 remaining in the half as Hugh Freeze saw his team get off to such a good start, but Vanderbilt on both sides of the ball with a lot of momentum. Yes, I want to go back to that touchdown and show you a lot of good football in one thing. So they first they come with the with the motion and shift. I want you to watch Mary right here, number 38. He recognizes it, so he shifts everybody knowing that it's going to go this way. So he's right on it. Now, you have to adapt and overcome. And this is what he does. John Seymour sees it. He's got a shift. And he runs right underneath Kendichi and gets in the end zone. That is an, as good as it gets for a three-yard run. And there's a lot of good football right there. And for a three-yard run, he almost made it all the way over to the left hash and finished just inside on the goal line towards the right hash, covering all that lateral space from one side to the other. You know, the field position battle is really turned around for the Rebels as well. They started off in positive side early on, those first two possessions. They had the interception, and then there was the 16-yard punt by Vanderbilt. But then their last four possessions, 26, 25, 14, and 25 a little different when you're working out of a hole and now third and 15 an even bigger hole as Wallace five receivers empty see if Vanderbilt gets after him again four sacks already goes short over the middle to Scott short. and Scott's going to come up about a yard and a half short that's fourth see if they go for it He's going to. Gutsy call He's right on here. his own 34-yard line. Fourth and one, and Hugh Freeze decides to go for it on his own 34. He's going to try to draw him off. Nope, going to stay with it. 
That play clock has plenty to tick down here. And that game clock is coming down under a minute and a half. Both teams with two timeouts remaining. So we'll see if he just plays the, the game clock here. And as you see, Wallace going to let it go down. That didn't, I, that didn't make any sense. If you're going to do that right there, Tess, you're going to let the thing run down, try to get him to jump off sides. He, he tried it early, and then he let it go. Now shaving it down to 119 on the game clock here as Vanderbilt will get the ball back. Three unanswered touchdowns. Last year against them, they had two unanswered in the second half to come back and win. But here's how they got it going, and it started with Wesley Tate. And then Jordan Matthews, I mean, this was something that had the crowd up. 55-yard touchdown reception. And then Seymour. Ron Seymour making it 21 to 10. Tess, what that is to me is just a reflection of what James Franklin is as a head coach. James Franklin is a guy who comes from East Stroudsburg under Denny Dowds. He comes to Vanderbilt with a chip on his shoulder. Saying, Here's a fake. And look who it is. How about that? The fake punt. Robert Kandichi picking it up. Don't forget, in high school, the kid ran for like 700 yards. He's got those skills. 6'5", 300 pounds. That's an outstanding call by Hugh Freeze. Robert Kimdichi on the fake punt, 11-yard gain. See him right up top. He has run skills, and they took advantage of it right there. He had to read that block to the outside. Came in, cut it, and it's a first down for Ole Miss with 54 seconds to play in the half. They go to the screen here this time with Jamez Logan. One timeout remaining for the Rebels. Moncrief got up. With a little hitch in his kid long right there. He's on the sideline down. Robert Kendici giving Ole Miss another chance here before the half. The screen again, and this time reaching out is Logan for the first down. So that will stop the clock for the moment as they move the chains. Big smile on the face of the number one recruit in the country. Touching the ball for the first time in his career. Clock counting down now, under 22 seconds for Bo Wallace and company. Dumps it over the middle to Jeff Scott, and Scott is taken down at the 38-yard line. And the timeout is called with 14 seconds remaining. Ole Miss. They had the offense on the field. And this freshman class, listen, I know Vanderbilt has stormed back here, but an impressive group of talented first-year athletes oh, yeah. for Ole Miss. I mean, it's, it, it is an impressive group, and it's more than just the hype. You're watching it. They're, you're watching Kendici grow up right in front of, in his first game. You're watching Connor make big plays all over the field. You see Tunsil, the left offensive tackle just standing in there like a pro and this these guys are as advertised it's it's kind of amazing you know Tess I was part of a number one recruiting class about 300 years ago <laughs> and, and oh, was that about 75 at Penn State yeah, yeah it was and it took it took three years for that group to come together and we played for the national championship this group is ahead you can see Kim Kandichi Tunsil Treadwell's got it all over him this, this is a good group, and that's, it's easy to see why they rated him so high. They're at the 38 right now. For what it's worth, Andrew Ritter did hit a 55-yard field goal in warm-ups. Clock counting down. Wallace swings it to the outside to Scott, and he just gets back to the line of scrimmage with six seconds remaining in the half. So they will send out Andrew Ritter. And we told you, in warm-ups, heading in this direction, he was able to connect on a 55-yard attempt. He was better going to this field goal post compared to the other one. Well, he's going to get his chance. This from 55. Right was able to do it in warm-ups. Let's see if he can cap this 
at the end of the first half. And it's no good. Had some leg, but it was off to the right. Kim Dietschy got them in position on that fake punt 11 yard run. But it was Vandy with 21 unanswered to storm back after falling down 10 zip. SEC conference opener between these two programs on the rise. Let's go down to the field to Maria Taylor. Coach, what made you decide to put the ball in Robert Kandici's hands on that fourth down play? Well, momentum has shifted terribly to, to them, and we've got to try to do something to get it back and felt like we could uh, move the ball and maybe get three points before the half that would, uh, you know, get us back in it. Uh, we, we get the ball coming out, so we just got to get in there and regroup a little bit and, uh, and uh, get this momentum shifted back our way. What do you believe is the biggest challenge facing your defense? Well, we're just young, and, uh, you know, you got to go in there and look in their eyes and tell them, hey, just play the next play. Nothing we can do about the last ones. We've given up some big plays. Matthew's a good player. He's made some good ones. Uh, they played well. You know, we've got to quit giving up big plays and just settle down. All right, thanks, Coach. Jordan Matthews is a good player indeed. 109 yards and a touchdown, the receiver for Vanderbilt. Let's join Chris Cotter, Todd McShay, and Robert Smith back in the studio for the Land Rover Halftime Report. Gentlemen, take it away. This is Dick's Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime. Served by Applebee's, part of Dick's Sporting Goods Kickoff Week as you are watching the SEC on ESPN. Opening night of the college football season and a conference game to get things going. Jordan Matthews revving that engine. The All-SEC wide receiver. What a start for him. 109 yards and that spectacular touchdown. Bo Wallace is going to need to dig out of a hole here. 21-10. Vanderbilt. 10-zip Ole Miss in the first. They storm back. Three touchdowns and three possessions. That offensive Vanderbilt, it came alive. It really did. And and you heard Hugh Freeze talk to Maria Taylor at halftime about getting the momentum back on his side. So what he's going to have to do, two things. A, they didn't run the football very well at all in the first half. They've got to get some kind of a running game going. Vanderbilt thought they could take it away, and so far they've done that. And then B, they've got to get some big plays out of that passing game. They have three outstanding receivers. Bo Wallace has got to find them down the field. Ole Miss only had 21 rushing yards in that first half. Vanderbilt will be kicking away. As Ole Miss had an opportunity at the end of the first half. It was a 55-yard field goal attempt that they couldn't connect on after the fake punt by the number one recruit in the country, Robert Kendici on an 11-yard run. Jalen Walton back to return the spear kickoff. Once again, Terry Spear drills it. Let's look at our coaching adjustments brought to you by the Home Depot. Well, it's a pretty simple adjustment, and what it's going to do is it's going to involve Matthews. Because Matthews has done a nice job of finding holes and reading his blocks against zone defense. And so after this long one, they did adjust, and they tightened coverage a little bit. Now, the next step is to see a double move. One of those are going to come pretty soon. They're going to fake that underneath stuff, and Matthews is going to go deep. Jerry Rice's second cousin. Yep. He's got the good bloodlines, does Jordan Matthews. I love his work ethic. Here's Jeff Scott. And he shoved out at the 30. Maria. Yeah, guys, I catch, caught up with Coach Franklin, and he says all roads lead to number 87. As you mentioned earlier, they have to put the ball in Jordan Matthews' hands again. They're acting like this game is 0-0, playing everything six seconds at a time, and the goal now is to make sure he gets touches. Thanks, Maria. Here's Wallace now, keeping it himself and spinning for a good gain in the first down, taken down by Andre Howe. Good read by Bo Wallace. Bo Wallace is running a little bit more than I thought he would considering coming off of that shoulder injury test but the one thing that I also expected him to do was is he's got he's got to find some of those receivers down the field now, last year against Vandy, he had passed for over 400 yards in that last minute loss 
First and ten here. Play action going to take a shot downfield. And he's got Dante Moncrief. So just what the doctor ordered for the Ole Miss offense to start this second half. Inside the 25 are the Rebels. And he had Moncrief on the outside in a, a, perfect, a perfect job. He, he had him on a safety. And that's Ladler on the outside, number one. You get Moncrief locked on the safety, you take advantage of it every time. Wallace again keeping himself. And just getting two yards that time. But the 39-yard reception by Dante Moncrief. You can see the Ole Miss crowd reacting here after the quarterback was thrown back as Westman and Taylor came in on. By the way, a big contingency of Rebels fans making that four-hour drive from Oxford, Mississippi. They had their own drove going here in Nashville before the game. See that entire section of red that the offense is in front of right now. Scott and Walton remain the backs here, second and eight. Play action. Flag is down as he was looking to swing it to Walton. Only the second flag we've seen tonight. Prior to the snap, false start, number 71, five yard penalty, remain second down. Pierce Burton, the right tackle. Guy who grew up in the Bay Area and made his way down to the deep south to play his college ball. So it backs him up to a second and 13. They give the look again to the other side. They tried to set up the middle screen to Walton as he looked off Jeff Scott, but he threw it inside and behind him. It'll be third and 13. You know, one of the things, you have Moncrief on the outside. They have Hal matched up on him. Now, if I'm, if I'm uh, Ole Miss right now, you got to get the ball to Treadwell. They don't have an answer for Laquan Treadwell. This is a big physical receiver who can run. They need to get the ball to him. Two by two, Treadwell, number one recruit in the country at wide receiver, slot to the near side. He only has one reception on the night. Third and 13, pressure comes, and he has to throw it away. It was Kyle Westman once again getting after Bo Wallace. Westman's having himself a pretty darn good night here tonight. He's gotten pressure. He's gotten in on tackles. He's been bringing it with speed from the outside and from the inside. There he's lined up as a defensive tackle, and all they're doing is just running a twist. And that's the defensive end down inside, and he comes around to the outside. But because of his speed and hustle, he's been effective. 44-yard attempt for Andrew Ritter. He made for 30 earlier tonight, missed from 55 at the end of the first half. And this slid off to the left. So that 39-yard reception by Moncrief ends up with Hugh Freeze with his arms folded. Missed field goal. Ole Miss comes up empty to open up the second half. here thank the uh, bandy video staff for helping us out gathering some of those dance moves through the heat of august here in the music city carter samuel's boy jumping the route that time was cody pruitt and he almost came up with it that was dangerous as he was looking for jordan matthews who is hopefully just who is up. lower leg there your star player Matthews with 109 yards and that spectacular 55-yard touchdown dash earlier. 
Yeah, yeah that's that that's how like they're tending to it. Yeah, that looks like a cramp. Hey, remember we said about the home the Home Depot adjustments? We said we're going to have to take care of Matthews. Yep. Well, that's exactly what Pruitt just did. They were waiting on that thing. Now, the next step to that test is a double move for Matthews. Now, you can watch Pruitt come from the inside out. He's reading that and eyeballing it the whole way. He had a chance to take that back for six. As they attend to his cramp here, I will be shocked if I don't see a double move from Matthews here in the second half. So as they tend to their star receiver, Jordan Matthews, it gives us the opportunity to check in with the studio to Chris Cotter. Chris? Tess, want to remind everybody about the AT&T All-American Player of the Week. Last year, Jadavian Clowney was the AT&T All-American Player of the Year. If you want to text your vote to 34763, get involved. Who knows? Maybe Jordan Matthews will be one of the candidates next week. We'll announce winners every Thursday. Back to Tess and Madden, Ben. Thank you, Chris. Jordan Matthews, uh, grossly underrated. You consider what he did in astounding 94 catches, over 1,300 yards receiving last year. This is a guy, Matt, we talked about it. He had no other scholarship offer outside of Vandy coming in out of high school. He's the last player that then head coach Bobby Johnson signed in that recruiting class. And Bradley Roby, you know the All-American cornerback up at Ohio State? He decommitted from Vanderbilt, and that's the only reason. It opened up one last scholarship, and here they are with a guy that could end up being the all-time receiving leader in SEC history. And he'll play on Sundays. That kid's got it. He also, what he's going to have to get right now is probably some IVs, get some fluids back into him. Listen, very, very hot, humid past couple days here in Nashville. Everybody surely feeling the effects. Pistol formation now. Brian Kimbrough took a big hit, but he didn't have the ball. Instead, Carter Samuel was able to pull it, and it goes incomplete as he was looking for Trey Wilkins. He wanted Trey Wilkins on the outside. This is a great collision. Watch Kimbrough. Nice fake, nice collision, and then excellent coverage on the outside. There was no place to go with that football. Collins did a nice job of staying where he had to. That play designed for him to bite on the quarterback coming back inside, but great patience on the outside. Third down and ten now. Inside screen, it was thrown just beyond Chris Cantero, so they will have to punt this away. It's a good series for the Ole Miss defense. They needed to make some adjustments. We talked about it with our Home Depot adjustments, and they did just that. They tightened things up, they jumped a couple coverages, and they had good discipline. And because of that, they're forcing this, this punt on fourth. Well, we'll also get another chance here at that big completion on the opening drive of this second half, but and the field goal opportunity go astray. And Taylor Hudson on to punt. That should be down right there. It will be. They will mark that back. So Vanderbilt up 21 to 10. Oh, look at that, Millen. That's, that's Chris Singleton. Uh, the that's equipment Chris manager. Singleton. That's Yukon Cornelius. That is, it's it's all the Rudolph special. Yeah, you got that's Yukon Cornelius. Ain't been nothing but man nor beast. Here's the man, and there's the beast. <laughs> Nine win season last year, tied for the most wins in school history, dating back to 1915. And what a way to start the season right now is the Commodore storm back in the second quarter. 21-10, Vanderbilt here in the SEC conference opener. Joe Tessitore, Matt Millen, and Maria Taylor with you on this opening night of the college football season. A little bit of delay right now, Tess. That's because the hour. Still having some headphone problems down on the field. Happened early in the game, and they went over to both coaches. They just want to make things fair. One guy doesn't have them, other guy's got to take them off. Hear them detailing circumstances also with the game clock, which will be kept officially on the field in the south end zone. And as you see the difference in the Ole Miss offense from the first quarter to the second quarter, and then Austin Carter Samuels, the quarterback for Vanderbilt, also turning his game around as well. 
they go quickly to Treadwell. Treadwell picks up a block, and you see that long stride of a Juan Treadwell, the six foot three freshman. That's the guy right now who they have to ride. This Vanderbilt defense doesn't have an answer for him. 15-yard reception. Jeff Scott now. He is swung down and able to spin free just for a minimal game, but it was Baron Dixon, the big space eater, getting to Jeff Scott. With Aaron Morris out of the game right now, they've put the freshman Laramie Tunsil in at left tackle, and they've taken McRae, who's a starter at left tackle, and moved him to right tackle, and then taking Burton and putting him back inside a guard. Jeremy Tunsil, one of the top recruits in the nation. Second and nine, Wallace in the face of danger, and how about that? Going up and getting it is Treadwell. They don't have an answer for him, Tess. I'd ride that horse all night. This is just extraordinary athleticism by the freshman. Remember I told you he has some uh, 88 for the Dallas Cowboys. Urban Urban. Michael Irvin. He's got a lot of Michael Irvin in him. He's got a lot of momentum as well right now as once again they go back to LaQuan Treadwell. And another first down as Ole Miss has it inside the 20. And that up tempo is now paying off for the Rebels. Time again, looking Treadwell's way. He's in the slot on the near side. He's showing a little pressure off the edge. Right back to Treadwell. A little stop and go as he quickly and effortlessly gets to the 11-yard line. See what Bo Wallace is doing right here. He's seeing the blitz. Treadwell's helping him by pointing it out. They're bringing that guy down. That means the safety has to come from the secondary to pick up Treadwell, and he's just going to pick up at least eight yards. Wallace inside the five this time. He's able to get it complete to Evan Ingram, the other freshman. He started at tight end. He was covered by Javon Marshall. But Treadwell, four receptions on this drive, and look how quickly they're in position. Barry Brunetti comes in with this package down at the goal line. Remember, he had the rushing touchdown earlier tonight for Ole Miss. Here's Brunetti, his second of the game. And just like that, Ole Miss closes the gap. So exactly what they wanted to get done, Ole Miss got done. They have squarely moved momentum to their side and they've gotten Treadwell involved in the offense. Now you have two legitimate guys, Treadwell and Moncrief, and it's a different game. He's so physically gifted, one of the big stars of that signing class. He was the one that locked himself in early as a verbal commitment well before signing day. And then got things rolling with the others who came along. Seven play touchdown drive for a little hotty time. Chris Cotter in our ESPN studios. Time for Coors like cold hard facts. And it's a fact. Rutgers traveled a long way to get to Fresno. They're in red. And here's Gary Nova finding Leonte Carew. That's a long way as well. The bomb made it 17-7. Scarlet Knights on top in the first quarter in the Valley. That game's over on ESPNU. Back to Tessin Mack. Thank you, Chris. Back here in Nashville, Joe Tessitore, Matt Millen, Maria Taylor. And a good opener to SEC play. Ole Miss cashing in moments ago. Offense finding its stride here early in the third quarter. Cutting into that Vanderbilt lead. 21-17. Doors on top here at home. <laughs> Kimbrough smartly taking a knee there. Saturday night football on ABC. It'll be Georgia and Clemson. 8 Eastern. That is the big capper on Saturday night. Great way to get it started here with the Thursday night doubleheader. And then comes Saturday night, Matt. Boy, that is a big showdown. There's so much on the line between those two. Well, Murray can throw the heck out of the ball. Coming off a great year from a year ago. Same with Taj Boyd. They both have speed. They both have physical offensive lines. That's going to be a fun game to watch. 
Austin Carter Samuels, first year starting quarterback, under center. Brian Kimbrough using the hole correctly there. Getting three and a half yards behind Fitz Lassing, the fullback. It's Cameron Wigan. Keep in mind, Jordan Battelle. Matthews is still not back out of the or out of the locker room. And so Kimbrough, to me, is their best runner. He's their best field guy. He has the best vision, and he's the most patient runner that they have. Now's the time to be able to exploit what he has. How about this formation? As all three running backs go in the inverted full diamond with Carter Samuels. Kate Kimbrough and Seymour. And they will keep it with Tate. And it'll make for a third and short. Anytime you go right and left in that formation, you gain yourself two lead blockers, regardless of who it is. So third down and call it three as Hugh Freeze looks for his defense to step up. James Franklin offense trying to get by without their star player receiver Jordan Matthews, who cramped up earlier here in the third quarter. Carter Samuels is down here lined up wide. Yep, that is Brian Kimbrough taking a direct snap on third and three. They pull the guard. He goes back against the green, fumbles the ball. The ball is down. It's ahead of the line to make, and it appears as if Vanderbilt has recovered. That's a big old hit up inside there. Looked like Andrew Bridges fell on the ball that time. Cameron Wingham, number 55, put his head right on the ball and appeared. Right there. That's a good old smack. Ball come out. Bridges is the guy who came up with it and gets the first down. Right tackle in the right place at the right time. There's Seymour this time, and he is oh. dragged down Kim Dietschy. by Robert Kim Dietschy. That's a big-time play right there. That's just a little foreshadowing of things to come. You're going to watch him down the bottom of your screen, number five. Working off, you know what? Now, that's three guys he worked Three guys he fought through yeah. there. Three guys, three pathetic blocks, I might add, but he still fought through them. Seymour this time. Oh, oh nice. that move. Pass midfield. Jerron Seymour. Boy, does he have something to him. Tess, it is easy to see why James Franklin says he's one of his favorites. He's just got something to him. He has a little bit of that Barry Sanders stuff in him. Just stop and start, get you juking. Look at this. This is stuff you can't teach. Either have it or you don't. Seymour's got it. 32-yard run by Jerron Seymour, who they listed 5'7", 200. You can take that 5'7", and <laughs> shave off a couple there. He is small, fast, elusive, and powerful, and quite effective. Carter Samuels now, has time, goes to the other side, but he overthrew Cantero. Tell you what he didn't see was the Hendrick Collins, that corner, fall off his coverage. He was lucky on that one. Collins had a chance to do one of two things, either make a pick or blow up the receiver. Samuels will say he had a really good camp, a little more comfortable now, better with the terminology, making better decisions, been sharp. Remember, senior, but his first year as the man, it was Jordan Rogers, who was the starter here in recent years. Second and ten. This is complete that time to Jonathan Krause. Krause has had a fine night, both catching the ball and then that key block. Big time block, yeah, that's a big time catch. He went down low, Carter Samuels, he put that thing the only place it should be. It was on the line, it was down low, and it's only gonna get caught by one guy, and that's Krause. Krause, four catches, 59 yards, had the key block that sprung Jordan Matthews on his 55-yard touchdown sprint earlier tonight. He's only playing because Chris Boyd's not here. And Chris Boyd suspended from the team. Those are the circumstances earlier. He's down here. Carter Samuels gets it out to Krause again. And 
tried to fight for a little something extra, but was tackled by Golson. And there is Jordan Matthews coming back over to the sidelines, buckling up that chin strap. You see that left forearm wrap there, Matt, yeah. said the that means they hydration they issue. Yeah. As a Tate nice grinding by his Tate. way down to the words of sticks. It'll depend on the mark here. Looks like they're going to mark him just a touch short. Maria, what can you tell us about Jordan Matthews? He definitely received an IV while he was back there with the training staff, guys, but he's coming back on the field now. It appears that the cramps are wearing away. What a reception from the crowd here as they recognize their All-America candidate coming back in. The third and one as Vanderbilt is knocking on the door again. Once again, Kimberly lined up for the direct snap here. We're going to follow that block of Pitts lasting the fullback, and he does so inside the five. First and goal, Vanderbilt. Ole Miss, they're going to have to make an adjustment on that. The only time, the only thing they've done is run the football every time they're in that, that, uh, that formation. Lassian comes in, they take the direct snap, and every time it's a run. So you, to me, you have to blitz that thing. Take the chance and, and make, that, make him become a thrower instead of a runner. What a response this would be to Ole Miss and their touchdown drive. First and goal. Inside leverage by the corner. You can get the fade on the outside with Matthews. They're looking to the other side, but he overthrew Jonathan Kraus. Threw it to the short side of the field to Kraus. Matthews was the near side. I don't understand that. You had a lot more field to work with down here and you had an inside leverage defender with your best receiver lined up to the outside. To me, that just spells fade the whole way. It's Franklin, the star player back in there on second and goal. There is Matthews once again to line up on the right hash against Anthony Standifer. Wesley Tate, the lone back here on second and goal. Again, inside leverage, a lot of field to the outside. Touchdown, Vanderbilt. There's a flag in the end zone test, but it came after the touchdown. Sort this out here. Came well after Tate had crossed the goal line. Yeah, probably somebody got snippy in there, which would mean they'd have they might have to move this extra point back. After the play, personal foul. Number four of the defense. Well, Touchdown that's is Kim good. Dici, that up. penalty on being forced on the kickoff. And that's the older brother, Denzel Kim Dici. So the second touchdown run of the night for Wesley Tate. Younger brother of Golden Tate, former Notre Dame receiver, NFL receiver. And what a great response by Vanderbilt after Ole Miss cut the lead to four on that touchdown drive capped by Barry Brunetti. This a 12-play drive that stretched 75 yards. And Spear pushes it back. To an 11 point margin. The senior running back driving it home for the doors. Well, it's the southern summer. That sun shining down like Daddy Silver Dollar got a hop. When I. The Vanderbilt offense doing their job moments ago, leading the way. Good charge from the offensive line. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Aaron Murray, Taj Boyd, number five. Number eight. What I love about college football. Week one, and we're going to determine some things here. What you're going to determine is not only, not, you know, not only where they stand, but which guy took the bigger stride. Hodge Boyd has tons of talent. So does Murray. I'm really anxious to see who took a bigger stride this offseason. That's Saturday Night Football presented by Windows, part of Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week. Georgia and Clemson, Saturday at eight. 
Brent Kirby and the gang will be down there. Game day will get it started. Four hour game day starting at 9 a.m. Plant me on the couch and I'm good all day, Norm. <laughs> Ole Miss back on offense with Bo Wallace. They found a little something last time out with Laquan Treadwell. Uh, there's a shot. Four straight catches for Laquan Treadwell. And Bo Wallace needs to know where he's lined up. I said it earlier, they don't have an answer for him. Whether they're playing in zones, he's a big man, big body man, has great run skills. As you watch Brunetti go in for the score, or if they go and try to match him up, and they haven't matched him up. This kid, hey, all you SEC fans and all you college football fans, you remember this name right now. Because Treadwell is legit. Five catches make it six now as they go right back to him to open up this drive, and he quickly gets it just beyond the 30 yard line for a five yard reception. Big this is a name kid. you're going to need to know in college football this year and in the coming years. Laquan Treadwell. Right back to him, and why not? He uses the block and has an easy first down. That looks like Des Bryant there. I must be have, must have Cowboys on the brain or something. This is just too easy now for Wallace and Treadwell. Somebody down on the far sideline. That was at the end of the play there. It appeared to be Stephen Weatherly. Defensive end who came in, showed some pressure earlier tonight. Redshirt freshman. Had a really nice spring and fall camp and started to emerge and they'd been working him into that rotation of that defensive front as coordinator Bob Shoup. Bob Shoup's done a nice job with his defense and he's not afraid to bring pressure. Remember I told you earlier they like to play and they like to move this defensive line and give it movement it puts a lot of pressure on your safeties. They have to be good tacklers but he's also not afraid to walk up and play a lot of man. He knows he has one corner in Hal. He's looking for another guy on the second side. Bobby Shoup, uh, Ivy Leaguer, who's come far in the coaching ranks, a Yale alumnus. He was inspired by the legendary Carm Coza. I laugh with James Franklin. James said, listen, I, I'm, I'm pretty smart. I'm smart enough to surround myself with high IQ guys. He's got Shoup, who comes from Yale, and then his offensive coordinator, John Donovan's a Johns Hopkins guy. Yeah, and I always remind him, though, you have all those smart guys, and you got a East Stroudsburg guy leading the charge. Well, he's been something special as James Franklin. Boy, he really is. What he's been able to do here with this staff and keeping the staff intact. That is absolutely critical. The only SEC team that has its entire coaching staff intact from last year, and that makes a huge difference as you see Weatherly able to walk across the field there. His mentor was Denny Dowd at East Stroudsburg, who's still there after 40 years. Last nine Ole Miss plays, six receptions by Treadwell. Here's Wallace, plenty of time, looking downfield, and unable to connect with Dante Moncrief, but the flag comes in as Andre Howe had coverage on the very talented Dante Moncrief. Howe, was, Howe had great coverage. He was on that back hip just like you want him to be. That looked like good football to me, but we'll take a peek at it. Pass interference. Number 23 of the defense, 15-yard penalty. He's right where you want to be. Uh, that looked like good football to me. What he's probably going to see, he didn't, he didn't really touch him with that upper hand, but maybe that's what he thought he saw. First that's good defense. Vanderbilt tonight. Yeah, that's good defense right there. Moncrief's a good player, but so is Hal. 419 left in the third, and that's the first penalty on Vanderbilt tonight. So a first down past midfield. Wallace play action again. And he goes to Treadwell again. You talk about leaning on a crutch now. I mean, this is just a test. I think they just figured out at yep. halftime. Look, this kid's special. Get the ball in his hand. They're going to match up Moncrief with Howe. You don't have an answer for the other guy. He's in the slot. Slot defenders are the hardest guys in all of football to find. And so take advantage of it. Time out. Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt's going to use a timeout here. 353 remaining in the third. Hugh Freeze, his second year at Ole Miss. It's Kyle. Get a break for a moment. Just got flags. 
celebrating its ninth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities general scholarship funds for each field goal next year. One kick. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $3 million in scholarship monies. Yes, I don't know if you know this, but you're in good hands with Allstate. You know no, they've been in good hands with Treadwell. Laquan Treadwell. You said at halftime they realized the matchup was there in the second half so far. Already seven receptions for 66 yards to move this offense down the field here for the second time. Just key to that last drive and we'll see what Jeff Scott can do. Uses a block here and then rolls his way to the 41 yard line that time. You know, it was Montreef, number 12, who came in with all the hype and well deserved with the season he had a year ago, had 66 catches. But Treadwell, number one receiver recruit in the country, what a debut for him. Well, there's going to be a lot more days like this and better. This is this is just his first step. Two for eight and third downs. Third and four here. A little bit of pressure. Wallace tucks it, shuffles it ahead. And then leaning forward was Laquan. You're on a first-name basis with him by now. Hey, you should know him by now. He's catching <laughs> two out of every three receptions here. Oh, man. I, you know, we said this at the beginning of the game, and it's the same thing. I mean, you got to get the ball in his hands. There is no answer for Treadwell. Up-tempo. They pump one way. Wallace. Boy, that was dangerous as it was Walker May closing in on him. Took just that extra beat and may close that gap and went at Wallace's feet. He just got it away in the direction of Treadwell. So it falls incomplete, second and ten. This drive alone, four receptions. For the freshman. They're showing a blitz in the top side. That's hearing at the top side as the officials come in. Yeah, We're yeah. going to get a timeout for Ole Miss. Hugh Freeze saw it. Bo Wallace didn't. So Hugh Freeze called the timeout. Freeze has been leaning on those recruits. We talked to him about all this freshman talent he said listen the one thing I can say is they have all been so coachable and you think about this day and age Matt, of the way these guys sign and the attention they get in recruiting and the egos that some of them can carry with all the media pumping and he says they're like sponges they're hungry to learn they listen well and you see it so far with Treadwell and Kandichi and Tony Connor trailing by 11 but there are early results being in on this freshman crop. There is a lot to like about the future Ole Miss football. Oh, man, are you kidding? This is, this thing's got, they, there's some kids with greatness written all over them. And the maturity that you see, now the Kendichi kid, he's going to make some mistakes. You saw him missed a tackle down there. But he's going to make a lot of plays that most guys can't. Treadwell's going to make plays that most guys can't do. They'll make mistakes and they'll correct their mistakes because they have the athleticism to be able to do it. Remember, it's Vandy who's the more experienced team that's a little further in the arc of the program on the rise in the third year of James Franklin, but young and talented is Ole Miss. Second and 10, Wallace slips a tackle and Wallace goes ahead for a gain of about eight and a half, nine yards there. Third and short, and they're going quick. They're hurrying up right to the line on third and one. Jeff Scott. And he's going to be right at that mark as it was Stephen Clark. Looks like he's who short. tripped him up. It'll depend on the spot here. And they're saying fourth down. Stephen Clark made an outstanding read. He saw it, and he came out of the secondary with a blitz. Either a nice call or a great read that sets up this fourth down, and they're going. Here's fourth and one.
Wallace. He's got it and slides down. Smart play. Smart play by Wallace. Don't take the beating. You know what you got. Get the first down. Get back. Shoulder surgery that kept him limited in action in his fall camp, but he has been willing to carry it himself. And that looked like it was tipped near the line of scrimmage. It was. Looked like Westman got his hand on it, number 92. Westman's played himself a good football game here tonight. They were counting on him. He's a kid who loves the weight room. He's got a great motor. He'll get better as the season goes on because he, he needs some experience. Second and ten. He's got time to the end zone. And incomplete looking for Dante Moncrief. Did you see, did you see the play at the line of scrimmage? Bo Wallace wanted to throw the thing up, and the defender was was kind of wanting to jump but not jump. They had it right at the start. Watch it right down here. He kind of snakes armed this. him for a moment. Yeah, watch. Just throws him. Right here. The case coming. Now he's gonna wait, wait, wait. See him jumping up and down. That's a nice job by Duran Harris. Third and ten now. Remember, they had the fourth and one conversion to put themselves in this position, but now facing a third and ten. As Westman lines up. See if they can get after him again. They've had four sacks of Wallace tonight. That's a first down for Ole Miss. Jordan Holder going low to corral it. Well, he threw that ball before he ever even made the break. And so that thing was down low, and Holder does a nice job. You see the ball's in the air before Holder ever gets out of there. Holder does a great job of coming back and making that catch. And here's the first. He's a steady walk-on for the last four years. He's earned a spot in this rotation. Walton now spins free inside the 10-yard line with a little extra effort. Aaron contributing well tonight. Second down now. Get it to the outside to Holder. <laughs> nice pushed hit. out by Williamson there. And see this mark here down at about the three-yard line. Final minute of what's been a wildly entertaining third quarter. And looking at the mark there at the far sideline as Andrew Williamson came in to meet Jordan Holder right near the sticks as they measure. Just that short. There's been some nice hitting here tonight in this game, and all legit. Ooh, yeah. Williamson, Williamson hit Holder with his chest. Give him a chest bump. Just a couple inches to go here. This will be the 15th play of the drive. Third and inches. <laughs> Down at the three-yard line. Back and forth, these teams have gone. This is where Wallace's legs become a real factor. Jalen Walton flanking him as the running back. On third and inches. He reads it and reads it perfectly. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Oh, we got a good one here in Nashville. We just talked about his feet being a key. And here it is. And it looks like they may go for two right here. But this is all on Wallace. He's making the read. You see, Westman comes down to take the dive. Wallace is going to pull it because he's an unaccounted for runner. He goes for it, gets it, and now they go for two. So the decision here to go for two and make it a field goal margin if they can get the two-point conversion. Tell you, Walls has played a heck of a game for a guy who was worried about taking his first hit. He has a lot of a lot of miles under his belt here tonight. He had, he had that shoulder, shoulder surgery, surgery, and it was a throwing shoulder, but courageously working his way back. Two-point conversion, try to cut it to three. Treadwell. How about that? Money. 
Laquan Treadwell. Millen, you saw it in the slot to the top, and so did Bo Wallace. And we got ourselves a field goal margin as we count down the final half minute here of the third quarter. A 15 play drive. Wallace with the three yard touchdown run, and then the two point conversion to Laquan Treadwell. What a coming out party! For the freshman. Yes, a year ago, you and I had the great opportunity to watch Alabama. And while we were watching tape of practice, he had not played yet, we kept on saying, there's a kid here, Amari Cooper, who's legit. This guy's all over the place. So we're watching this film here of La Laquan Treadwell, and this guy has got the same kind of ability. You said to me yesterday, you said, listen, last year the freshman breakout receiver was Cooper. I think I know who it's going to be this year. And I think now the nation is realizing number one on Ole Miss is the name to know. Just look at what this recruiting class has done here tonight. Kendichi, three tackles, but his presence has been made the whole time. Anger has a tight end. Also a punt run ah, for exactly. 11 yards. Treadwell, no, he's been the guy. Nine receptions. And then Connor, who started this game off with a pick and then a couple of big plays. I'll tell you. They didn't miss on this class. There's eight receptions in the last two drives alone. There's Laquan Treadwell. <laughs> Brian Kimbrough from halfway into the end zone. Oh! oh, oh Ball is on the ground. I mean, Kimbrough was absolutely laid out. Ward number 11. Vanderbilt recovered it, but Kimbrough took a huge, huge shot by Channing Ward. Of course, it has been termed the most dangerous play there is in football, and they've been dealing with the rule changes to limit the amount of kickoff returns we have, and that's a good example of where a touchback serves you well. The thing that's so impressive about Ward's hit is he ran right through a block to be able to make this. See him up top right there. Bam! That was a good, clean football hit. Remember the change last year where they kick off from the 35 and the touchback run up to the 25, and we had about twice as many touchbacks than the year before. And this time he chooses to bring it out, and he'll start from the 12. Wesley Tate. Patiently looking for a hole and choosing wisely to the 18-yard line. As we come that to the one. final 10 seconds of what was a wildly entertaining third quarter as Kimbrough gets a little attention from the medical staff. Laquan Treadwell announcing himself. Ole Miss has pulled to within three. The SEC opener. A great night here in Nashville, and more to come. Stay with us. You're glad you're watching the SEC on ESPN. Joe Tessitore, Matt Millen, Maria Taylor with you here at Vanderbilt Stadium. And if you were bored out of your mind all summer long, welcome back to the great American addiction. Football, college style. Second and four for Vandy to start the fourth quarter. Up by three. Marcus Samuel is going to take a shot downfield. Jordan Matthews, crowd thought that he had Golson hanging all over him, but no penalty flag is down, and James Franklin is incredulous to that. No flag. Looks like that looks like a good non-call. I think James Franklin slightly disagreed. From his angle, <laughs> that's probably right. Meanwhile, it's third and short. Third and four yards. They got to get this one. Get a little bit of that momentum back that they just lost. 
They go empty with Tate in the slot. Design quarterback run, and they pull it off with precision. Carter Samuels out to the 26. Trey Elston finally gets the tackle on that's a nice call by John Donovan, the offensive coordinator for Vanderbilt. Yeah, this, this, they've been throwing that quick thing outside, so they use it to their advantage, and Carter Samuels takes it back up inside and gets that first. Needed four, he got eight. Now, if you're the Ole Miss defense right now, your focus is on 87. You're not going to let him beat you. Make somebody else beat you. Jordan Matthews, All-America candidate. And receiver left the game for a moment. A lot of movement up front, drawing Isaac Gross, the nose tackle. And DT Shackelford, they're going to need that football back. <laughs> Shackelford's a story. He's had two knees. He's been out for a while, and he came back this spring and this Part fall. Of play, snap infraction on the offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Now he's playing again, playing again, some defensive end and some linebacker. And he's talked about as one of the most genuine good guys in that program there at Ole Miss. Missed the last two years with an ACL. Backs him up to a first and 15. Don't beat yourself. That's rule number one. Come in tight. I formation. Going to run out of it with Tate. Tate back to the original line of scrimmage with a gain of five. Tackled by Shackelford. Tim Dietschy also there holding down the fort. Shackelford coming in from the backside. Tim Dietschy, it'll be fun to watch as he, as he matures and as he grows and gets a feel for college football. I mean, this is his first game. I mean, you can see why they are so hyped about him. He's got, he's got a great skill set. Second and ten as Tate flanks Carter Samuels in a shotgun. This is Stephen Shoy, the tight end, who makes one move and then was forced out. And they're going to mark him just inside the 35-yard line. That'll be about a yard short. Well, he shook Denzel Kimdichi, and here we go, third and short. Third down and one for Vanderbilt. Remember, Brian Kimbrough was knocked out of the game after that hard hit on the kickoff return. They were rotating Tate, Kimbrough, and Seymour at running back, but now Tate getting more work. They go pistol this time on third and one. More downhill run out of this formation. Tate's the bigger guy at 224 pounds. Stacked up that time, and it was Robert Kendici wrapping up the legs of the senior running back, D.T. Shackelford, also getting in the mix. Kendici was able to make that play because there was no push on the inside. That's a nice job by Isaac Gross. He just anchored down inside. There was no movement. And because of Gross's ability to not get moved, they were able to make the play from the outside. Jeff Scott comes on to return the Taylor Hudson punt. Remember, he struggled the walk-on punter in his first go-round. Only had a 16-yarder earlier tonight. Scott lets it bounce, and he takes a big, handy roll and goes out at about the 14-yard line. So well done by Taylor Hudson. 52-yard punt. Ole Miss is going to have their chance. Trailing by three here in the fourth. Laquan Treadwell back out there when we come back. Dressing well isn't just about nine to five anymore. So right now at Men's Warehouse, it's buy one, get one free on almost everything in the store. Because today, men are looking just as good off the clock as on. Men's Warehouse. Mr. Freddy, welcome to the neighborhood. We know moving can be hard. Well, you guys live around here? Yeah. yeah. It is a tradition if we give you something that you give us something in return. Like what? Just a quick picture of the ankle would be I'm more fun. interested in Ryan Matthews. Did you guys jump over the gate? Oh, Rivers, is he going to get the protection he needs? Can we at least see the Lombardi trophy? Yeah. I took our fruit basket. The league is moving to FXX. Season premiere Wednesday at 1030.
They're small. Small? I'm seven and a half inches of heaven. They're loud. Um, yeah, we're speakers. We supposed to be loud, dummy. And they love talking trash. A bug-in speaker? Done. Yo, can I borrow your pager and your acid wash jeans? Can I borrow your eight ball jacket? A lot of trash. No filter, no kidding. That is not a good picture, you boo boo. Beats by Dre presents the pill. Small, loud, Bluetooth, wireless. <laughs> They're coming. Completely redesigned for whatever you love to do. The all-new Nissan Versa Note. Your door to more. You're not going to fit. Maybe you should just get a ride with Kevin. SEC knows how to entertain. Opening night, conference game, 28-25, home team here in the fourth quarter. And it's Dante Moncrief with the four-yard reception for Ole Miss. Interesting now in the second half. Moncrief and Howe was the matchup that they had anticipated being a big timer, and it still is. But Treadwell on the other side, Vanderbilt doesn't have an answer for it. They're going to have to do something other than they're, they've been blitzing and zone blitzing like right here. That was thrown to the outside that time as he was looking for Moncrief. But how close is this game? 314 yards of total offense for Ole Miss. 318 for Vandy. Tess, listen, right now their goal is zone blitzes and they're bringing the underneath guy and they're putting the safety on Treadwell. They're giving him eight yards. Eight yards before safety can come down. This is a bad read by Bo Wallace. You have a matchup on the outside, but you have a complete mismatch with Treadwell. There it is, right in front of him. Let's see if he looks number one's way here on third and six. Goes underneath, picks up the first down with Jamez Logan. Logan was in stride, cutting across on the slant. He had a huge game against Vandy last year, went for eight catches for 160 yards, comes up big there. Yeah, well, Logan has the, it was the benefit right there of Treadwell, because that was a rub. Yeah, they, they just ran a rub on the outside and came off inside under Treadwell. Here's Scott now able to turn the corner. Jeff Scott, another first down for Ole Miss out to the 45. And I talked about a rub. What that is is basically a pick. There's a nice block on the outside by Moncrief on the edge. But these, I'll tell you, this Treadwell is doing some things that are very, very experienced. Wallace out of the gun. They line up with 29 seconds on the play clock. Then he checks over. Tempo style, a few frees. Cuts down and split his going across the formation. Checks down that time underneath, looking for Engram, the freshman tight end. It'll make for a second and ten. Their number two of Hugh Freeze last year brought them to a bold victory. Remember how much this team struggled before he arrived. Now that instant surge of all this young talent, all the highly rated young talent. Wallace keeps it. Look at that pull straight up the middle for Bo Wallace. He's played a gutsy game here tonight. Considering he had that shoulder surgery in May, hadn't taken a hit all of training camp, and he came in here guns a blazing. I mean, he's, he's not, he's, he's, he's running, running hard. 22-yard run that time. That time on the far sideline, that's incomplete as Moncrief couldn't stay in, covered by Hal. Nice coverage by Hal. Looks like he's trying to get Moncrief back involved here. I mean, the smart play, though, is forget Moncrief. Go to your slot. They don't have an answer for it. 
He's been riding that horse the whole second half. Keep it going. Moncrief slot to the near side. Or Moncrief top outside. It's Treadwell slot to the near side. His two favorite targets. Second and ten. They bring four. He gets it complete for another first down, this time to Engram, the freshman tight end. Engram's he's had good, himself a good game, yeah. hasn't he, Matt? Yeah, he has, and he's he's a guy who has good feel for, for where to sit down in zones. He knows how to find the hole. He understands a leverage defender. What that means, if you're taking the inside, he'll break to the outside, and Bo Wallace is finding him. They move the chains again. Five receptions now for Evan Engram. Here's Scott. A lot of green in front of Scott. It's going to be first and goal, Rebs. Nice block in the slot by Treadwell. Got to hold his, got onto the safety and allowed Scott to be able to get in there. And here they go with the hurry up again. The concern on the face of James Franklin is that up tempo is getting the best of this Vandy defense. 18 yard run by Scott. First and goal, Wallace. He's going to be a yard short as he was wrapped up that time by Walker May. So it'll be second and goal. Two by two, gun with Scott as the back. Second and goal. Looks like Vandy had a slant on. Let's see if they adjust it. Wallace. Oh, that was too easy. He used it. And Ole Miss has got the lead as he pulled it out of Scott's belly and walked his way across the goal line. The Rebels have come back. Tess, they did a nice job on the right at the start of the play. Walker May. He showed the defense, and he took a hard step inside like they were going to run the slant. Then they looked to the sideline, and he came back in with the slant, and he just kept it and ran in untouched. Nicely done. Nice play call from the sideline. Andrew Ritter adds the extra point. They trailed 21 to 10 at the half. Back and forth, these two went in the third. And now Ole Miss storming ahead by four. Bo Wallace capping an 11-play, 86-yard touchdown drive here in Music City. ESPN College Football Primetime is served by Applebee's. Applebee's two for $20 menu just got even better with the new Honey Pepper Grill. And in part by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Don't worry about sleep. Just stay with us right to the end. Ole Miss 32 to 28. They have scored touchdowns on their last three possessions as James Franklin's Vanderbilt team is being tested here at home. Remember, Brian Kimbrough, one of the running backs and key return men, knocked out of the game. So now Darius Sims and Torin McGaster back to return kicks. And this time, smartly, Sims takes a knee. Let's go back and show you how they capped off that last drive. I want to show you anatomy of a sideline and quarterback being on the same play. I'm going to watch Westman down here on the bottom of your screen, right there. He shows what they're going to do. So they regroup, they'll look over to the sideline. They sideline sees the same thing what Westman is doing. So then they come back and they give him the play again, anticipating that Westman's going to take that hard inside. That's going to put now the tackle to the outside and just let the quarterback's mesh point draw the, the, the defender, and he walks right in. That's as good as it gets from sideline to quarterback. Bull Walls, two rushing touchdowns tonight. As Ole Miss has rallied here, Gordon Matthews stacked up this time by the Ole Miss defense. That was Tony Connor among the defenders getting in there. He's played well also. And now remember what we said earlier, Tess. Double move has to come. Now is about the time. Wesley Tate. 
State gets it just beyond the 30. Will it be third down at about four and a half yards as he was tackled by Trey Elston. You've run that play to Matthews about eight times tonight. And you've thrown it, and now the, def the defenders are biting on it hard. You pump that sucker and get him on the double move up, he may score from here. Right now, the concern is staying on the field. You've got to convert this third down. See the difference in Matthews. Remember, he left the game with Grants. Got an IV. Third and four. To pass here over the middle, complete to Matthews. Matthews has the first down out to the 45 yard line. A 14 yard reception. It was smart. They got pressure. But Carter Samuels sits right in there. Takes one right on to Kisser. But they're sitting back there in a zone. And Hendrick Collins is sitting topside and allowing him to come break underneath. There's no underneath defenders. That's stealing. It was Martin who came in and put a hit on Carter Samuels. Stood in the pocket courageously to deliver that first down Vanderbilt. He was looking Matthews way again. Now looking to extend the play and just had to get rid of it as Shoy became his only option on the near side. Back and forth they have gone tonight. Ole Miss jumped out. Was so impressive. All that young talent showing up early. And then Vanderbilt storming back before the half. But then Ole Miss, three straight possessions, three straight touchdowns. And now Vanderbilt's going to be in a third and ten situation here. And so what Ole Miss is doing is what we said. They're going to take 87 away and make somebody else beat you. That's what you do. Even if you double it, it doesn't matter. Make him find somebody else because right now, Carter Samuels is eyeballing Matthews all the time. He's taking a snap and looking right at him. Make someone else beat you, and that guy is probably Price. Third and ten. And a whistle comes in there. May have been some motion. Part of the snap. Full start. Number 53 of the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains third down. Tess, remember we talked about Kim Dietschy and the ability, his, his ability for versatility. Now, they've lined him up in the right end. They've lined him up at the left end. And now they're lining him up on the inside. It's a 300-pounder. He's a 300-pounder with movement. And so you can run a lot of stunts inside. And you can get a mismatch and get him on half a man, and he'll do something for you. Third and 15. And four. Carter Samuels dancing around. Flag comes down. As he's able to connect with Seymour, but there is a flag down all the way back at the 35-yard line as those linemen were trying to help out Carter Samuels extend the play. Number 52 of the offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, third down. And they're going in the wrong direction with these penalties. Remember we talked about Kim Dietschy. Watch this. One, two, three guys on him. He still gets through, gives chase, and there's Bridges up there. That was that was more like a hold up, not necessarily a hold. And it's Carlos Thompson working against Bridges. And now a third and 25. They got to get to the plus side to the 45 of Ole Miss. They're going to rush three and drop eight. And that's exactly what they do. Carter Sanders all day long to look over his options on third and 25 and now running out of them. And that ball intercepted off the deflection. Other saying they was out. As that was Mike Hilton coming in on a seemingly innocent tip drill. Another penalty flag is down back at the 31 yard line, so we'll check on that. And you can see the all freshman guy, Robert Kimdichi, taking some deep breaths after those 
last three plays. That's a big man who can run. He's just a kid, man. He's 18 years old. What a future he has in front of him. Illegal forward pass. Number six of the offense. Passer was beyond the line of scrimmage when he threw the pass. Five-yard penalty. Balls are down. Fourth down. So Franklin's offense had nothing going there. And three straight penalties as they will place the ball back at the 27-yard line as they send out Taylor Hudson, the walk-on punter, who told you earlier is studying to be a neurosurgeon here at Vandy. Of course, Vanderbilt, such a high academic institution, but in recent years, putting forth those resources and creating energy with James Franklin to compete the very best they can in the SEC, coming off a nine-win season. And takes another Vanderbilt bounce as Hudson's been creating that momentum the past couple punts. Just over six and a half minutes to play. Ole Miss up four. You're watching the SEC on ESPN, one of the great southern cities, Nashville, Tennessee. So much entertainment to be found. And tons of entertainment coming your way. 9 hour, 9 a.m., four hours of college game day. They'll have all the Manziel coverage leading up to kickoff with AM and Rice. Nick Saban's going to join the guys live as well. 9 a.m. game day will get you started as Moncrief gets the Ole Miss drive started. Let's check in with Maria. Guys, for the first time, I saw the entire Ole Miss defense come into a huddle together, and linebacker coach Tom Allen told them that Vanderbilt beat us last year, reminding them of that, using it as fuel in today's game, and told them that they want one more takeaway. They need one more the next time they take the field. That defense, Maria, has been rising up two straight stops against the Vandy offense. Remember last year, Matt, Ole Miss was up 17. Vandy rallied in the third, came back with 14 unanswered points had a game-winning touchdown pass with 52 seconds remaining that has stayed with Ole Miss they're hungry for this one tonight Oh Wallace huge hole right up the middle for a first down Bo's well, getting smarter as this game is going on that's about the third time I've seen him hit the deck to avoid a hit 11 yard run for Wallace as Hugh Freeze measuring the circumstances situation here as we see that clock under six minutes. They're going to take their good old time now. Wallace 31 of 44. Of course, he's also been effective on the ground with a couple of touchdown scores. Up tempo to put them in position and now trying to close things out here that was overthrown looking for Treadwell. Reminder that Sports Center will be coming up after we finish things up here in Nashville. They'll have all the analysis of Jadavian Clowney as South Carolina took care of North Carolina tonight. NFL with a lot of preseason action. Collins says, don't believe the Heisman hype. Hey, listen, folks. Trust me, I studied this thing inside and out. You don't give it away in September, and you don't want to be the guy coming in with all the hype. Didn't work out for Andrew Luck. Didn't work out for Matt Barkley. It's a different day and age of Internet voting for the Heisman. He who moves last moves best nowadays. Jeff Scott. Smart play by Scott. He stayed in, and that clock will continue to count down. Coming under five minutes here in just a few seconds. You know, this this Scott, this Jeff Scott's another one. He's he's got great movement. He gets everything he gets out of his small body. He's a good receiver. He's just a good football player. Just there's just not a lot of them. Five seven a buck sixty, the senior from Miami. Silken wet with a rock in his hand. Third and six. Vandy needs a stop. They're showing blitz. Treadwell's coming down inside. Look for a crossing route. Can we get across the field? There he goes. Wallace with time. That was almost picked off. Darian Herring had his hands on the ball, but the clock's going to stop with 4.33 remaining, and Ole Miss will be punting away. And what exactly what I said is what they were going to do. They cut the split down. That gives your receiver, see, you see who he's going to is Treadwell. That was Treadwell going across the formation. They're gonna, there's a lot of ways to beat a team with speed. 
One of them is to run across the formation, and that was it. Tyler Campbell on the punt away. And he drives this one. Oh, it bounced at the one-yard line, and he'll go for the touchback. Well, Vandy will have their at-bat. The California kid, Austin Carter Samuels. Can he pull it off down four at home? Been a thrilling one here, just like last year, when Vanderbilt was down 17 points in the third quarter. But Jordan Matthews did it to Ole Miss again. 52-yard touchdown from Jordan Rogers, then 52 seconds to play. And Chris Boyd with a touchdown, and Vanderbilt pulled it off 27-26. They were down 17 in the third. Tonight, Ole Miss, on two different occasions, has been down 11. They rallied back, and now it's Ole Miss with the lead here at Vanderbilt, 32-28. But Austin Carter Samuels in that Commodore offense, they got a shot here. Here's Matthews. And he couldn't get free. It's Mike Hilton staying with Jordan Matthews. You know, lost in that, that recap of the game. Jordan Rodgers last year, made a phenomenal run on fourth and two to get a first down and then a third and 12 when they were backed up pinpoint throw to Matthews. Vanderbilt's been stopped in their last two possessions Matt. This offense been sputtering along against the Ole Miss defense here in the fourth quarter. This is the formation he needs to be in. Arthur Samuels over the middle nice. and gets it complete for a first down. And Jordan Matthews did a good job of just holding on as Cody Pruitt came in and made solid contact. And you can see the effect it has on Matthews. He's feeling it too. No. Now he's going to get put in his. Now he needs to come out of the game. The official. Yeah, he might, he's tapping out. The official here. might just call that thing. They're going to keep it on the ground here for a moment. And just a gain of one for Wesley Tate. But Matthews really took such an impact there yeah, he's, he's running back down inside and that's a good clean hit really good hit it's a shoulder pad but it's still into the chest area and he's feeling it that's cody pruitt and that's just that's nice oh and he's vomiting on the field yeah you got to get him after out of that there. hit by cody pruitt test that's the first yeah, indicator that's a telltale, that you have a sign. Yeah. telltale sign you talk to anybody and a medical staff and they'll tell you that's number one on the list so they will tend to Jordan Matthews who will be leaving this game with nine catches 136 yards and a touchdown left the game earlier was cramped up Maria Taylor told us they went in they gave him an IV put him back in the game it is just a hot humid night and as Jordan Matthews is being tended to by the medical staff I will say this watch the hit Hits a fine hit, but then watch his head off the turf. That's probably what you're getting. I'm going to tell you this right now, though. We have come light years, light years. Yeah, he, he wants to come off. He's going to ask to come off, and then he decides to suck it up and go back in. But we have come light years with how we treat concussions. The sidelines, these these uh, doctors on the sidelines and the trainers are very, very well versed in protocol for a concussion and uh, you're going to get the best of care. Okay, now he's out. Kraus has to step up. You have to get the ball to Kraus. Use the tight ends to the middle of the field. That worked early in the game. They haven't gone back to it. But can they do it without their best player? They go to Kraus on a screen, and he is brought down, wrestled down by Cody Pruitt, the guy who knocked Matthews out of the game moments ago. And that clock is ticking down. Two minutes, 44 seconds, just a one-yard gain. Only two timeouts for Vanderbilt. And Matthews is coming back into the game, Matt. That surprises the heck out of me. Now, they would have gone through all concussion protocol, and they and the doctors would have said, yeah, you're okay. That's the only way he can get back that on the field. That seemed pretty quick to pull that off. Yeah. So Matthews looks a little more steady on his feet as he comes in here on third and eight. He's lined up one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. And he's looking all for him right now. Third and eight. Samuels, can he pull it off? Flag is down as he's taken down that time. It's going to be a hold. 
One of those Thompson celebrating. Tess, he eyeballed Matthews the whole way, and the coverage was right there. It was the same route he was going to come back inside at an in route, and they took it away. But this is going to be a hold. Thompson and Gross were coming in on Carter Samuels, and now Robert Kandichi, the number one recruit in the country, who's had a stellar night cramping up. 90 plus degrees the past two days. Hot and humid deep into the night here in Nashville in what has been. Holding. Holding. Number 53 of the offense. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. It's been one of those back and forth battles that asks so much of these players. Reminder that Sports Center will follow this SEC conference opener. We'll get you squared away on all the NFL preseason action on Clowney's night in his debut in South Carolina's win. And set the table for this weekend ahead in college football's kickoff. They're going to go for it. Fourth down and 18. Yeah, Desperate they measures. No, well, they have no shot. They get the ball up. It's over. This calls a timeout here. And as you saw, Hugh Freeze talking things over with the headlinesman there, Gary J. Rowe. A reminder that Saturday night it's Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week continuing. First at 5:30 Eastern, the defending champs is Alabama. Is looking for history, and that quest will begin against Virginia Tech. Then at nine. Number 12 LSU, number 20 TCU, Les Miles, Gary Patterson. Great matchup of coaches there. And that's coming up at 9 on College Football Primetime, presented by Hampton Hotels. So much made of the debut of Robert Mimdici. Well, it's easy to see what they like. Now, he's just raw, and he's, you know, he's still attacking a full man, but he's got a great motor. He can run. Now watch it. There's a, there's a touchdown he ran under it. But here's his punt. You can see the run skills, the athleticism. Uh, the, the future is bright for Robert Kendici. I mean, that's you can see why he's the top recruit. You can see all those things. Fourth and 18. See if Vanderbilt can ha cash a lottery ticket here. Keep this thing alive. Going to take a shot downfield. Oh, Matthews pulled it off. Can you believe that? They had a habit, and he gave it to them. Moments ago, he was puking on the field and taken out. They're working off Collins. They didn't get their hands on him enough. They didn't. They got to disrupt his route. Matthews goes inside, just runs right through that thing. That's a fantastic play by Matthews. You got to get it. When you walked up there as a corner, you got to disrupt the route. He just ran with him and just kind of touched him. And you got to jam him. Don't let him run through. 42 yard reception on fourth and 18. Oh, this thing's getting wacky. Steven Soy, touchdown, Vandy. Oh, my. What a comeback. Just when it looked like hope was gone, Austin Carter Samuels comes up with a fabulous finish. And Spear puts it back to a three-point margin. They blew this coverage test. They ended up having the choice. They bring the corner on a cat blitz from the outside. They're going to bring the corner down in 
side. Here's what happens. It gives this defender two people to cover. He makes his choice. Carter Samuels reads him, jumps back inside, and it's six to the outside. There it is. And Choi, all alone, he wanted to make sure he got it and had to beat the safety. But a fantastic job of reading it by Carter Samuels. And you think James Franklin's excited? <laughs> Ole Miss has one timeout remaining and 90 seconds on the clock. And all those thousands of fans that made the four-hour drive from Oxford in disbelief. This has been a thriller of an SEC opener. And it's not done yet. Now you can't drop your coverage in those things. That, that is a corner blitz. They needed another defender out there. And nice job by Austin Carter Samuels, because as soon as he saw the blitz, there's only one defender back there. And you have a choice. And that safety, the only thing he could have done was stayed back and not declared and then force something underneath. Instead, when he did declare, Carter Samuels made the right read to the outside. So here we go. Does Ole Miss have it in him now? Muscles that thing. And it'll be one timeout remaining for Bo Wallace. A year ago, just a 52 seconds left when Pandy had the game winning touchdown. Now Ole Miss looks to avenge that with some little magic of their own here. Reminder Saturday Night Football on ABC. It's going to be something special. Number five, number eight, Georgia Clemson. Saturday Night Football presented by Windows, part of Dick's Sporting Goods. Kickoff week Saturday at a big game. Brent going to have that one. Well, we're going to get the season started here in a opening night Thursday that has bled into an early Friday morning of college football. Wallace over the middle and just beyond the reach of Treadwell. So now what they've done is they've taken Stephen Clark, the other corner, and they put him on LaCron Treadwell. They still have Howe on the outside on Moncrief, but Clark is now in the slot. Here's Scott. First down and more. He comes back. He could go. <laughs> Jeff Scott, could he? Are you kidding me? Jeff Scott is great, Scott. 75-yard touchdown run. Ole Miss recaptures the lead. Oh, they're dancing, baby. How do they write this script? Opening night, college football 2013. It may never end here in Nashville. 23 seconds after Vanderbilt scores in dramatic fashion, Jeff Scott tears off a 75-yard touchdown run. Just outrageous. 39 to 35, James Franklin and Hugh Freeze all the blood is pumping here in Nashville. Tess, let's go back and look at this touchdown. And this is a classic case of bad angles and good blocking. You're going to watch this. He's going to get to the top side. Now look at these receivers up top. They are the whole key. And because Howell jumped back inside, he's blocked. And then it's just instinct and speed. Poor angles are taken. That's just this. That's just phenomenal. Look at this on the outside. Moncrief. Makes him jump back inside. That's an outstanding job by those receivers to get great Scott three for six. Nice call, Tess. Jeff Scott, a five foot seven, 160 pound burner from Miami. That natural playmaking ability. Boy, did he turn it on, and he was gone. 
Are you thinking about making some wake up calls to friends that have dozed <laughs> off a little early? Now, don't forget, it's a four point game, so you have to score six. They went for two earlier. Ritter will be kicking off. Sports Center's coming up after we finish off this early classic here. 39 35 in what is really a critical conference game for both programs who are on the rise in the SEC. Sims going to return this. Darius Sims finds a seam. Sims to the outside. There's going to be a face mask here at the end of this. And Vanderbilt is going to have prime field position with 59 seconds remaining. Looked like it was Tony Connor. The big recruit who came in at the end there. Personal foul. Face mask. Number 12 with the kicking team. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. They are going to set up shop all the way out at the 49 yard line. Two timeouts remaining for Vanderbilt. Here's the face mask, Matt. Yeah, it's the right call. And so now. Your Ole Miss defenders. What you have to, what you're doing is you're protecting six. You have 59 seconds, but you're not going to give up a touchdown. You can give things up underneath. Let them eat up the clock if you have to, but nothing to the end zone. Two timeouts to work with for Carter Samuels. Plenty of time. Over the middle, gets it complete to the running back, Tate. Got to hurry this up. Clock ticking down here as he was short of the first down. There's Jordan Matthews coming back to the line of scrimmage. Their star receiver, who is 178 yards tonight. Second and four, under 40 seconds to play. Harvey Samuels, that was tipped That's and an right. incomplete. That's smart. It's smart to be incomplete. It stops the clock. Isaac Gross tipped the ball. The nose tackle for Ole Miss, the sophomore. He's come back from injury himself. He's got to get the first here. That'll stop the clock. They can regroup. If not, he needs to stop the clock with a timeout. They have two timeouts. That's the luxury for Coach James Franklin. Look at the sweat glistening there on the sideline. Been a pressure-packed night in the high heat here in the Mid-South. Third and four. Play action over the middle and intercepted. That was Cody Pruitt as it went off the hands of Jordan Matthews and into the cradle of Cody Pruitt. Jordan Matthews will not be able to sleep tonight because that should have been a reception. Nicely thrown ball by Carter Samuels. It's right where it needs to be, right in the hands. He has that in-breaking route which they've been doing all night long. It's a zone sitting in front of the safety. And it's right there. Catch the ball. He does it a thousand times. Instead, it goes off. End of game. To think the guy who this year could become the SEC's all-time receiving leader, who courageously came back into this game with 10 catches and 178 yards, and now letting that emotion go there on the sideline. will avenge last season's last minute loss. Where do you even begin to describe the final two minutes of this game when Vanderbilt faced a fourth and 18 and somehow pulled it off? And then Ole Miss had Jeff Scott turn on the burners and he will be our Wrangler five-star player of the game. His 75-yard touchdown run to win it. 12 attempts for 138 yards and that miraculous touchdown. Vanderbilt's seven-game win streak is over. 39-35, an absolute thriller. Welcome back, college football. We're glad to have you. Stay tuned for Sports Center. Coming up next, Ole Miss gets that opening win. Let's get you to Sports Center.